10 spot, we have the Demonic Particle Accelerator. It seems that Elon is trying to cast CERN's Large Hadron Collider, aka the Particle Accelerator, in a bad light. Via Twitter, through a meme, Elon called it demonic. What the heck about it could be demonic? This is honestly fascinating as us, you know, regular folk would just assume that it's just a scientific tool. The tweet read, please let me use the CERN Large Hadron Collider. I am normal and I can be trusted with a demonic technology unlike anything the world has ever seen. Does this machine have some kind of darker purpose that perhaps the rest of the world may not be privy to? Do tell, Elon. Do tell. Number nine, quantum computer. This next one is eye-opening, to say the least. Computers are getting more and more advanced by the day. Deep fakes are going to ruin my life. They're getting really good at those. I feel like an old man every time I see those and fall for it. But thanks to our man Snowden, it was reported in the Washington Post on January 2nd, 2014, that the NSA is working hard at creating their own computer. How fun must that be? It's called the quantum computer and it cost about $80 million to create. And no, it can't send you back in time. This computer is safely stored in a massive room-sized metal box, which is not intimidating at all. And it's part of a program called Penetrating Hard Targets. I want to make so many jokes, but I won't. So it can break encryptions for just about anything. Finance records, medical, your old MSN, probably. What a nightmare that would be. The NSA is well on their way to breaking every form of public encryption. This quantum computer can theoretically break through any RSA encryption, which for the average computer today, that takes, I don't know, years, but this supercomputer can break through a lot faster. I'm talking days. Just don't go in my MSN, please. In our number eight spot today, we have Project Dishfire. It was reported by The Guardian that it had been revealed that the NSA collects 200 million text messages a day from around the world. They then use these messages to pull the details of certain location information, contact networks, and the credit card details of different mobile users. It was also reported that the NSA also provided British intelligence agencies with all of the data just without the actual context of the text messages. So the NSA has all your secrets and nudies, but at least they didn't share them? I don't know. Basically, they have all of this data and at any point could potentially extract certain information like past travel plans, your financial transactions, your contacts, regardless of whether or not you were being investigated for something. Yes, this sounds illegal, unethical, and a little shady. And this revelation all came before former President Barack Obama gave a speech about proposed policy changes in reality reaction to the whistleblowing that was going on around Snowden and the NSA. Number seven, friends without benefits. Even allies of the United States are not safe here. Thanks to Snowden, at the end of October 2013, it was leaked that the states were spying on Germany, France, and Spain. The NSA had tapped into 35 phones, which by the way, not just a couple of random dudes, they were spying on 35 world leaders. One of which was German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who called out the NSA after finding out, of course, and said this act of snooping was just unacceptable between friends. Really went personal with the friends comment there. It's like when you show somebody a photo on your phone and they start swiping, like, hi, hello, betrayal, see ya. Now, as you hear this, you're thinking, well, I'm not a world leader, what's the big deal here? Well, it was also reported that the NSA was monitoring phone calls in Spain for the average folk. They monitored about 60 million calls in one month. So yeah, world leader or not, be a little concerned about these guys, maybe. In our number six spot today, we have the Brazil spying scandal. It was reported by The Guardian that Brazil was second only to the United States in terms of the amount of communications that were being subjected to surveillance by the NSA. This means that the NSA were seriously spying on millions of Brazilians, including the emails and phone calls of their president. At the G20 summit that year, which took place in Russia, Brazil's president at the time, Dilma Rousseff, had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Obama in reference to this. He said that he would look into it and get back to her, but before he could, more NSA tea was spilled and it was revealed that the agency had also targeted Petrobras, which is Brazil's state oil company. This led the president to call this new information industrial espionage, and as a result, she called off her scheduled visit to the White House and demanded answers. The called off visit was important because it was to be the first state visit by a Brazilian president in about two decades. And although the Obama administration claimed claimed that it was a joint decision made by both presidents, some media outlets described it as the sternest punishment that had been received at that time in response to all of these NSA leaks. This also led Brazil to take a multitude of steps to hopefully get away from the American-run internet. Number five, backup. When Glenn Greenwald kicked this whole thing off in 2013 with Snowden and his reveals, it was this massive security breach, obviously. Snowden was, of course, in hot water immediately, but he was ahead of the game from the start. See, Snowden had told 
told Greenwald that if anything crazy happens to him, well, he'll just leak even more information. If Snowden was unable to access these encrypted documents on one of his four laptops, for, then it was set up to automatically send those private documents to higher ups, aka the people directly involved in the leak. On top of that, Snowden reminded the Guardian that he has many, many more secrets to spill, specifically the NSA surveillance systems. This is why you make backups. Duly noted, Snowden. In our number four spot today, we have the embassy catastrophe. There was a document from 2007 that was leaked which named 38 different embassies and missions that were so called targets of US surveillance. This document didn't quite make it clear whether or not these targets were being looked into by only the NSA or if the CIA and FBI were also involved. The document described certain things like bugging fax machines with devices that allowed them to listen in on conversation, and the document also listed the names of different programs that are used within the embassies. The document showed that the embassies targeted weren't just those of countries who seemed to be enemies with the United States, and instead included places like India and Mexico, Greece and Turkey. It appears as if the goal was to gain insider information into the diplomatic relations between the targets and the United States. The EU embassy in Washington DC was one of the targets on this document, and this leak had the potential to have jeopardized one of the largest attempted free trade agreements in the world because shortly after this all came out, negotiations were set to begin between the EU and the United States. The French president at the time made his anger about the situation very public and stated that all future negotiations will only be made under the agreement that the United States cease all unauthorized surveillance of any EU buildings or personnel. Number three, China. I mentioned earlier that summit where the United States originally wanted to call out China for cyber attacks, but instead Snowden leaked a PowerPoint training slideshow and the table return just like that. Snowden revealed himself as this massive spy kid on June 12th and he said he was planning on remaining in Hong Kong until he was kicked out. But in his first press interview since coming out with all this information, he informed South China's Morning Post that the NSA was hacking Chinese and Hong Kong computers since back in 2009. That's a long time ago, it's like when Avatar 1 came out, that's how long ago that was. More specifically, Snowden said that the NSA hacked the Chinese University of Hong Kong, aka the heart of all internet traffic in Hong Kong. Now of course this is eye opening, but there's many who see this hack attack as a good thing. See citizens want to know what their government's up to, and honestly I myself would love to know if the NSA was rummaging through my chats. So a poll was conducted on June 10th and 11, and apparently 44% of Americans were on board with Snowden's outing. They were with him, and 42% of Americans say that he's a bad boy. 57% were not a fan of the NSA's action, while 37% were on board. 30% of folks liked the fact that they were being spied on. That's some weird kind of kink, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you want the NSA in your Dropbox? Let us know in the comments your thoughts below. We'd love to hear from you. In our number two spot today, we have caller information. In 2013, it was reported by The Guardian that according to the documents that were leaked by Snowden, the Obama administration has allowed the NSA to collect different caller information from Verizon. This was done through what was called a quote, business records provision of the Patriot Act that was established under the presidency of George W. Bush. It allowed the government to order Verizon to hand over caller information every single day. The information included things like the time, location, and duration of the call. The information began being collected under the Bush administration in 2001, and they were collected from AT&T, Verizon, and Bell South. Of course, once these documents were leaked and the information became public knowledge, US officials began trying to reassure the public that this surveillance was somehow necessary and was actually a program vital to national security, but many people rightfully felt like the spying was an unnecessary invasion of their privacy. This one is tricky because there certainly is a fine line with these things. And finally, number one. PowerPoint. Nothing sounds less cool than a leaked 41 slide PowerPoint presentation, but when it comes to the NSA, odds are it's going to be a little juicy. This slideshow is used to train US intelligence, and I gotta say, 41 pages? That's it? I did 45 on medieval nights in high school. Step your game up. This program called PRISM cost about 20 million a year, and it was the highlight of this leak. PRISM kicked off back in 2007. Originally, they partnered with Microsoft, but once they were attached to Apple, come 2012, well, that's when things got a little bit fishy, as most things are with Apple, specifically their maps. That was horrible. The PowerPoint confirmed that the NSA has access to servers belonging to massive tech giants like Google, Skype, or even YouTube. Yeah, right here, they're listening right now. So your search history, emails, anything that rolls through those, usernames, passwords, well, they've got them. Even Skaterboy69 and Hotmail, odds are 
They're already looking. You're done. You're canceled, Brad. There was a summit in California which originally was tense. The United States were accusing China of cyber attacks, but right after Edward leaked this prism tea, they didn't have much power at that summit. China and Europe's citizens weren't too pleased here, and honestly, yeah, it's a pretty, it's a botched meeting. I can understand why. Coming in at number 10, we have- In our number 10 spot, we have Ulysses S. Grant. Apparently, Ulysses is known for being a bit of a badass in his time, but also, what you may not know is that he was actually a bit of a scaredy cat. How relatable. Same, Ulysses. Me too. But honestly, no wonder the government kept that a secret because if the public knew that he dealt with being afraid of a lot of things, it wouldn't have reassured them that they had a strong, you know, fearless leader running their country. Apparently, he had so many fears Years, including not being able to look at a single drop of blood. I hope he never had to go to war. Poor guy. Honestly, I feel fate when I see blood too, so I feel very understood right now. Number nine, hide your bread. Putting your money in your mattress sounds a lot easier than this system, that's for sure. Way less complicated too. Back in 2016, journalists all over the world were looking into what's called the Panama Papers, a plethora of leaked documents. Now these all came from a law firm, Mozak Fonseca. The operation here was that the firm would help the super rich hide their money in these offshore tax havens. And before you ask, yes, they got caught and this whole thing was of course shut down. In total, there were 140 politicians from 50 countries who were all busted, including the Saudi Arabian Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and Iceland's former Prime Minister Singunder David Gunnlaugsson. Yeah, y'all guilty. And we found out. Just, just be rich. Just be rich and do the things you have to do when you're rich. Don't hide your money. Number eight, SIM cards. In February 2015, it was reported that Snowden, our good boy Edward Snowden, he provided documents that showed that the NSA and the GCHQ had all hacked into a Dutch company that is responsible for manufacturing and supplying 2 billion SIM cards per year to big names. Names like AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, you're probably paying for some of these, you name it, right? While this hack would suggest that the agencies would then now have access to billions of unique encryption keys, which could potentially allow them to bypass wireless providers and monitor both the voice and data transmissions of every user, i.e. us. The company had actually been the target of at least two sophisticated intrusions, and they believed that the NSA and juicy headquarters, GCHQ, were all responsible, but the company then denied that the hack was successful in gaining access to all these encryption keys. Yeah, no, just, just the dirty text, nothing else. We're good though. Let's just hope that's the case. I mean, honestly, I'm deleting my history anyways, just to be safe. Number seven, military dolphins. Yeah, I said military dolphins. We're gonna get weird now, I guess. Iran has plenty of nuclear capabilities, but they also have trained dolphins now too, so good game. Back in 2000, Iran bought this fleet of trained dolphins from Russia, just, you know, Russians doing Russian things, but they were trained supposedly by the Soviet Union to attack ships, and yes, even people. We have Navy SEALs and military dolphins. This is it, behind the scenes for Aquaman 2, I guess. What's going on here? Well, recently, like 2018 recent, satellite photos revealed a Russian naval base in Syria with pens that are commonly used for holding, you guessed it, dolphins. Yep, the dolphins are back. Ooh. Russia and the US both have fleets of trained dolphins to detect mines, but now Iran's in the mix as well. Is the next world war gonna be dolphins? That would be loud. Number six, secret iPods. Nowadays, it feels like there's a new iPhone or a new iGadget every other day. Technology is evolving a little too fast, I'd say. VR? Not for me, I'm not ready. My body was not ready for that. Music is also personal. Spotify, way too personal. But have you heard of Apple's top secret iPod? Would you get one of these? I'd pre-order it, let's do it. Back in 2005, former Apple software engineer David Shayer revealed that the tech giant once partnered up with the US Department of Energy. This special iPod was designed to test radiation on the go without drawing any attention from the public. Yeah, imagine this thing in an Apple commercial, just dancing silhouettes, having a good time, and then just one guy suspiciously in the background like listening to music. This was of course top secret information back in the day, but Apple secretly helping the government by putting a Giger counter in an iPod for a spy, that's eh, next level, that's shady. We're gonna talk about that on this list for sure. Number five, catfish. I mentioned bird drones in part two, so obviously I gotta mention robot android catfish. Yep, you didn't believe them, they've arrived. What are we gonna do now, folks? The general public found out about this hidden spectacle in 2020. Catfish robots, specifically one named Charlie. Yes, it has a name. It isn't like the rest of the fish in school, okay? This one's actually an undercover agent working for the CIA, so. 
he's a different fish. This all initially happened back in the 90s when the CIA was trying to collect water samples, obviously in secret, so they would send Charlie Chaplips upstream by using wireless communications. That was their high tech, that was their James Bond plan, believe it or not. And yes, this was high tech stuff at the time, all hidden inside the 60 centimeter long catfish. Sometimes spy tech is cool, you know, like a secret iPod, that's, that's neat, we like that. This was not one of them. I don't think Charlie will make an appearance in the next Mission Impossible movie. You know what I mean? I think Tom Cruise is going to send up a robotic fish. Number four, caller ID. Back to our boy Snowden for this one, of course. He's so good. How can we not talk about him? The king of leaks, besides Sony, obviously. In 2013, it was revealed by The Guardian that, according to the documents that were leaked by Snowden, the Obama administration allowed the NSA to collect different caller information from Verizon. Yeah, this was done through what's called a business records proposition of the Patriot Act that was established under the presidency of one George W. Bush. So, this allowed the government to order Verizon to hand over caller information every single day. Yeah, all those breakups, all those prank calls, give them. Give them here. This information included things like the time, location, and the duration of your calls. The information also began being collected under the Bush administration in 2001, and they were collected from AT&T, Verizon, and Bell South. Now, of course, once these documents were leaked to the public and this information was, you know, widely spread, US officials began trying to reassure the public that this surveillance was somehow necessary and was actually a program vital to national security. Yeah, no worries, guys. We have to do it. We're trying to help you, you know? Help us help you by showing us your text messages. But many people, like you're probably thinking right now, thought that the spying was unnecessary and it was an invasion of their privacy. I have to agree. Number three, more documents. I mentioned earlier those offshore accounts for those higher ups, you know, those big bad boys. Well, a year later, after that 2016 scandal, even more documents were exposed. All the docs, all around the clock. Docs around the clock. Didn't even script that, that's how good I am. Docs around the clock, we can franchise that. Meaning, even more secrets, even more names. Spill the tea, who is it this time? Well, amongst the 13 million documents, we saw Nike and Apple. Yeah, they're shady, who knew? They had around $250 billion hidden in offshore accounts. On top of that, they were financial connections to the literal Queen of England and Justin Trudeau. Yeah, our, our Canadian lad. We got mad at him a lot for going to his cottage the last few years. Meanwhile, we forgot he's in some offshore accounts. There you go, some more juice to get mad at him about. Number two, Project Dishfire. This one sounds calming, Project Dishfire. Sounds like the best detergent you can get. It was reported by The Guardian that the NSA collects 200 million text messages a day from around the world. Yeah, this is, I'm just exposing all of your secret texts for this one, I was really coming for you. I bet half of these texts literally just say, you up. The government's like, damn it, we'll try again tomorrow. They would then use these messages to pull the details of its user. You know, location, time, contact information, and credit card details. Stuff you don't want out there to anybody. Especially people wearing dress shirts. Ugh, the worst. It was also reported that the NSA also provided British intelligence agencies with all of that data, just without the actual context of the text messages. Which is, that's comforting. Basically, they have all this data and at any point they could extract anything they wanted, like older purchases, past travel plans, past financial transactions, all your contacts, regardless of whether or not you're being investigated for anything at all, just because they feel like it. Yes, this sounds illegal, unethical, and quite shady, and it really was. All this happened right before former President Barack Obama gave a speech about proposed policy changes in response to the Snowden leak, so the timing couldn't be more crucial. And finally, number one, VX gas. The government using gas to take out targets. What is this, Mission Impossible? This is scary, I won't be able to sleep after this. What am I writing? VX gas is tasteless and it's odorless. It can take you out just by skin contact alone. The nerve agent VX is of course extremely illegal as well, obviously. It came from ICIS research from the early 50s when developing new insecticides. And it worked, a little too well I'd say, and it was swiftly and thankfully outlawed. But the bell can't be unrung now, can it be? This was the same nerve gas that was used to take out Kim Jong-nam back in 2017. That was a, a new revelation we discovered. We're like, oh, it was this gas. That's terrifying. Yeah, he was attacked at an airport. Two people rubbed a cloth on his face. That's all it took. It was covered in VX, and then he died on the way to the hospital. He had a seizure. How scary is that? Initially, officials thought cyanide was used here, but in reality, it was only 10 milligrams of VX. So far, that's the only confirmed case of VX being used to take somebody out. Again, the only one we know so far. So, sleep in fear. That's all I'm saying. Starting off this countdown, we have the transmission tests. 
The US government once ran a series of tests on people with disabilities and prison inmates. They thought that it was fine to do so with this demographic of people because basically they thought they were going nowhere in life and they have nothing to lose. One of the tests in the mid 1940s was quite disgusting. It involved having young men swallow unfiltered stool. They did this to see how a deadly stomach bug was transmitted. The study took place at a reformatory prison, the New York State Vocational Institution. They claimed that they couldn't just spray the germs and have the test subjects breathe it in. No, no, no. They said that swallowing it was a more effective way to spread the disease. Of course, these men were forced to do so against their will and were left traumatized. Coming in at number 9 is the pill. This one is sus as hell and was shared by redditor Maryam whose friends served in Desert Storm. They shared that every morning during muster, the troops were all given a pill to take and were told it would protect them from any and all toxins that the Iranians had released into the air. Might want to check the science on that claim, but moving on. The friend thought the whole thing was doubtful, so he never swallowed the pills and neither did some of the others. Fast forward a few years later and he finds out that the people who took the pills now all have various kinds of cancer and other really serious medical issues. The ones that chose not to take the pill are completely fine, so what the hell are in those pills and why were they being used as guinea pigs? What it be? What it do? Coming in at number 8 we have the Snowden files. Now of course these were leaked on a much more secure website than reddit. Snowden went to the press to get out all the classified info, but the thing is I've read all about this on reddit. It was going gangbusters on there and you can still go back and check it out. For those of you who don't know, Edward Snowden was working with American intelligence and leaked a ton of info about how the NSA was looking at all your emails, sorting all your phone calls and they could access all of that info at any time. Time. And frankly, they probably still are. I mean, just talk about something around your phone like this. Look at this. I need to buy ninja equipment for a ninja school. I need ninja stuff because being a ninja is cool. I want to be a ninja. Discount ninja clothes. I'm gonna get ninja ads now. Filling at number seven slot are the Montebello Islands. So during the 1950s, the British government ran three nuclear bomb tests at the Montebello Islands, located near the coast of Western Australia. Operation Hurricane occurred on October 3rd, 1952, where 25 kilotons of plutonium were dropped. Then came Operation Mosaic, taking place in the middle of 1956, where 15 kilotons were dropped on Trimio Island and 60 kilotons were dropped on Alpha Island. But this really isn't a big deal. Nuclear bomb tests were done so routinely back then, and the islands were uninhabited, so no one was really getting hurt, except, of course, the Aboriginal people that lived there. Their tribes are right on the mainland next to the islands, and they're extra vulnerable to the radioactive fallout, but that wasn't even taken into consideration by the Safety Committee or the Atomic Weapons Research Establishment. There was already huge radioactive fallout all over the mainland. There was even radioactive rain on the coast of Queensland. I just find it funny how the dose levels were ignored when it came to the Aboriginal, it's like, oh, we don't care. If they're not white settlers, we just don't care. At number six, we have the death of the Challenger pilots. Here's some gruesome details about the Challenger pilots that Cyrax2112 shared on Reddit. He said when the spacecraft exploded, the people on board didn't die right away. Even though the news flying around the world for a long time was as soon as it erupted into a ball of flames, the pilots were killed. Well, that wasn't the case. Apparently, most of the pilots survived the initial explosion and were flying around in the worst terror of their lives as they came crashing down to the planet. On top of this, NASA knew that this right from the beginning, but they kept this information a secret. They knew that if they made the crash seem more gruesome than it already was, that it would ruin the space program. And you know what? They were probably right. I mean, the crash was already the worst PR they could have received, and if you pack on news about people suffering before they died, no one would ever want to go to space again. Coming in at number 5 is Devil Eyes. So back in 2005 slash 2006, the CIA was working on a project dubbed Devil Eyes and it concerned Osama Bin Laden. Their plan was to create a Bin Laden action figure and sell it throughout South Asia, but there was a catch. They wanted to make it so when the paint on the figure was heated, it would peel off revealing this demon like figure with green eyes, red skin and black marks underneath. The point was to scare the younger Asian generation and turn public opinion against the real Osama. They're saying it like all the kids in South Asia were like, oh, we love Bin Laden. We don't. 
at all. The project was done with a former Hasbro executive called Donald Levine, who has also been called the father of G.I. Joe toys. In 2014, the CIA admitted the program was real, but that they had cancelled it after only three prototypes. But according to Reddit and the Washington Post, and someone who was directly involved, yes, the program was discontinued, but hundreds of figures were still shipped to Karachi, Pakistan. My parents just moved there. Let me see if I can find one of these. I will let you guys know. Coming in at number 4 we have sterilization. Redditor Ultra Meow wrote on Reddit about government documents that were found which highlighted the sterilization of Native American women without their consent. These were discovered in 1972. Apparently this was a common practice as the American people were constantly trying to wipe out the Native American population and to this day have done very little to repair the damage that has been done. Filling out number 3 slot are the secret archives. So apparently there's this huge secret facility in Britain somewhere that contains all of the British Empire's secret archives. And the British Empire literally colonized and ruined half of the world. Countries that are third world countries today were made that way since during colonization. The Empire literally stripped them of all their value and made them decades behind in terms of progress. Just imagine the horrible secrets this facility must hold. Now, apparently the British committed horrible human rights violations during the Mau Mau uprising in Kenya back in the 50s. The uprising was essentially the local Kenyan tribes versus to the colonizers and British army. The secret documents in the facility reveal the extent of torture and death that occurred there to the point any surviving Mau Mau could get compensation from the crown now if they wanted to. Millions were put in concentration camps, hundreds of thousands were physically and sexually abused, victims were refused medical aid, they were burning people's eardrums with lit cigarettes, like the whole thing was horrible. Sad fact, one of the victims was actually Obama's granddad. And coming in at the number 2 spot we have Operation Paperclip. Once again, not a secret that was originally leaked on reddit, but you can find so much info about it on reddit, and the first time I read about it was on reddit, so I thought it would be a good fit. This was one of the wildest government secrets ever. What do you do with the enemy after you defeat them? Do you disband? them? Do you kill everyone? Or do you try and take as much of them as possible to try and make your own country stronger? Well, the last option was basically Operation Paperclip. Turns out that after World War II, the Americans wanted to take what they could from the Nazis. Operation Paperclip was when the Americans took somewhere around 1500 scientists that were working with the Nazis. They had a ton of intel on German weaponry and explosives, and they wanted that data for themselves. I mean, would it have been better to let all that knowledge stay in Germany? Or was it better taking them for the benefit of the American people? I don't know, I guess that's a question of morality that will be floating around for a very long time. And finally, at number 1 is tracking. So this one's a bit iffy since it wasn't initially leaked on reddit exclusively, but I found out about it from reddit exclusively so I'ma make it count, cause I wrote this video and I can do what I want. Ok so don't worry, Che wrote his part, I'm not taking all the credit. Anyway, back in March of 2019, NBC7 managed to get their hands on a bunch of documents the US government had created. On it was a secret database of journalists, activists and influencers who were advocating immigration. In some cases, the data Database put alerts on these people's passports, but what brought these people under the lens is the migrant caravan at the end of 2018. 5,000 immigrants from Central America entered the US, and as the migrant caravan reached San Diego, they were met by attorneys, journalists, and more. Any journalists that helped any of the migrants or covered the story became targets of intense searches and inspection by border officials. Sounds like my life every time I go to the airport and get randomly checked. <laughs> okay, so random. Some advocates even get detained for 13 hours, others would be pulled into secondary inspection 4 times. Agents collect information on these people, the data shows their face, their social media, their passport numbers, everything. Homeland security even said we are a criminal investigation agency, we're not an intelligence agency, we can't create dossiers on people and they're creating dossiers. This is an abuse of the border search authority. Wow, I actually agree with them. This is kind of, this is, this is majorly screwed up. Number 10, Project Stargate. If you've watched Stranger Things, then this one probably sounds familiar to you. In the show, Eleven started off as an experiment to psychically spy on the Russians, and turns out 
This was actually real. In the 1970s in California and later in Maryland, the CIA recruited numerous men and women who claimed they had ESP or extrasensory perception. People with ESP typically say that they can read minds or move objects without touching them. They were recruited to try and help uncover military and domestic intelligence secrets. Mostly they just wanted them to spy on the Russians by reading their minds. The government covered it up of course because why would they want want people knowing they're trying to use magic powers to win a war. But in 2017, when 12 million pages of records were declassified, all of the information about the so-called Project Stargate became public knowledge. People learning that they had been using the men and women to locate hostages and even track fugitives throughout the states. In our ninth spot, we have Trump's dirty laundry. I don't mean like literally his stinky socks and undies. In May of 2020, Anonymous came after Trump during his presidency. This happened when Trump threatened to deploy his military force against the protesters. But Anonymous was like, nah, -uh, honey, you aren't doing that, and said they had dirt on him. They said that they would publish his dirty laundry. A couple of days later, they published 169 emails that mentioned Trump one way or another. Now, most of the emails weren't even bad but it was just a scare tactic to show Trump like, hey, we're not bluffing, okay? We got dirt on you. More on this in my next point. Coming in at number eight, we have Trump's connection to Jeffrey Epstein. So like I said, Anonymous leaked some emails about Trump. Well, they also threatened to release information connecting Trump to Jeffrey Epstein. Now, Trump and Epstein have been photographed together on a number of occasions. Apparently, they also have hung out with each other too. Some believe that Trump was a part of Epstein's ring and also exploited young females. And Anonymous apparently has proof, including access to Epstein's address book and old court documents. Technically, I'm cheating with this point since they didn't leak this information, but they did expose that they have this information. In our seventh spot, we have the Brazilian government. In June of 2020, Anonymous released personal information on the Brazilian president and his family and cabinet. This caused a lot of chaos. The federal police and the Brazilian Congress began to investigate. In the end, it was revealed that the federal government used two million of the public's money to fund advertising on several websites. Most of the websites supported the president, which makes sense as to why they wanted to put money into them. Not only that, but Anonymous leaked a number of government officials' addresses, income, and other personal information. The personal addresses were a very serious issue because it puts them at risk for attacks. Moving on, at number six, we have CSIS documents. So what I didn't know is that apparently Anonymous has some beef with the Canadian government. One of their first attacks leaked secrets about the foreign activities of the Canadian Secret Intelligence Service, aka the CSIS. It released information about the size of their network, what information they have access to, along with other sensitive government documents. The Canadian government has only admitted to having foreign stations in Washington, London, and Paris. But according to the documents leaked, they have over 25 foreign stations. And I quote, many of which are located in developing countries and or unstable environments. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the secret federal document. In another attack against Canada, Anonymous leaked top secret documents outlining the redevelopment of Canada's key diplomatic centers in Britain, including selling, relocating, and refurbishing Canada's diplomatic buildings in London. Now, it's nothing groundbreaking, but it's the fact that they got a hold of these top secret documents that's concerning. The documents were marked as confidence of the Queen's Privy Council, which basically means that it's top secret and private documents. Therefore, the government of Canada is looking into its own people to see if someone among them is leaking these documents to Anonymous, or maybe they're a part of Anonymous. In our first spot, we have the hashtag Ops Wake Up 21. In January of 2021, Anonymous attacked the government of Malaysia. They defaced 17 government and university websites. This was part of their campaign called hashtag Ops Wake Up 21. Basically, the purpose of this campaign was to highlight the poor security of the government's websites and to warn people about it. In a post, they said, and I quote, Greetings, we are Anonymous Malaysia. This is message to Government Malaysia. Your security system is low. All data may be leaked. 
This can cause unwanted hackers selling all your information. Basically, they accused the government for keeping silent and covering up a number of data breaches that occurred over the years. The government knew that personal information of their citizens was being obtained and sold, and they just kind of covered it up until Anonymous exposed them. Coming in at number three, we have Anonymous Malaysia Part 2. During the Anonymous Malaysia attack, they also revealed that Facebook was selling private information to government agencies. In a post, Anonymous said, and I quote, if you're a hacktivist willing to, or a man who just wants to protect his freedom of information and join the cause and kill Facebook for your own privacy. Facebook has sold information to government agencies and gave secret access to information security firms so they can spy on people from around the world. You can't hide from reality where you are. You're neither safe from any government. Someday you'll look back on this and realize what we've done here is right. You'll thank the internet government. We will not harm you, but we will save you. Okay guys, it is time to deactivate Facebook. Nice. Coming in at number two, we have Epic. In September of 2021, Anonymous leaked data from Epic, which is basically a domain registrar and a web hosting company that has provided service to websites that publish neo-Nazi and extremist content. It's a pretty controversial platform. And Anonymous leaked details of every domain that was ever hosted or registered through them. It also leaked a number of personal information of their customers, like their purchase records, emails, invoices, and credit card information. Over 15 million email addresses were exposed. In fact, they released three rounds of data on their website. The first was in February of 2021, the second in September, and the third in October. In October, they actually leaked information on documents belonging to the Texas Republican Party. And in our number one spot today, we have the NSA. So thanks to Edward Snowden, we all know that the NSA was spying on Americans through their phone records. Well, Anonymous just exposed the existence of a secret NSA and FBI program called PRISM. This program allows the NSA and FBI to take photos, videos, emails, and chats from the servers of nine different internet companies, including Microsoft, Facebook, Google, and Apple. Anonymous leaked 13 huge documents about this program, and it revealed that the NSA is not only spying on Americans, but also citizens of over 35 different countries as well. Anonymous said, and I quote, we bring this to you so that you know just how little rights you have. Your privacy and freedoms are slowly being taken away from you in closed doors meetings, in laws buried in bills, and by people who are supposed to be protecting you. All right, let's do this. Coming in at number 10, we have more MK Ultra. Sometimes the declassification of files reveals the wildest of conspiracy theories to be true. There was a rumor way back in the 1970s that the government was trying to find a way to control people's minds. The project involved human experimentation, and the United States citizens were unwittingly doped with LSD. They underwent hypnosis, sensory deprivation, isolation, and torture. John Greenwald, founder of disclosure site The Black Vault, obtained information on MKUltra via the Trusty Freedom of Information Act in 2004, but many files are still missing and many more were actually destroyed. Shockingly, CIA Director Richard Helms ordered all of the MKUltra files to be destroyed in 1973. In 2018, more than 4,000 new MKUltra documents were requested from the CIA after a successful crowdfunding campaign. It seems that the new records will be released shortly and will continue contain undisclosed information on the behavior modification efforts. Number 9. Climate gate. Yeah, we had a smooth one off the bat, now we're getting right into the serious stuff. Climate stuff. <laughs> Climate change and stuff. A little different sounding than Watergate, but we'll get to that one later on, obviously. Climate gate, this was back in 2009 when some hackers some hackers released thousands of emails and files all from the climate research unit in the UK. These documents, okay, hold on to your butts for this one, they show scientists suppressing the publication of research going against global warming. So this sparked a bunch of bad ideas because at that point in 2009, we just believed it. We just stopped listening at all. Climate change critics were like, aha, 
I knew it. It was all a conspiracy this whole time. The CRU responded and said the emails were out of context and that the planet is indeed heating up and we're still in fact burning towards our demise. But these docs leaked literally weeks before the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Denmark. So peculiar timing, I'd say. Science fired back pretty quick. Scientists all around the world were actively proving at that point that humans actively are causing global warming. Today we're uh, scrambling a bit more to figure this one out than 2009. Yeah. A few more of you believe this time around. Number eight, God save the queen. This one's quite grim, but I have to talk about it. Have you ever wondered what happens, what will happen after the queen passes away? I mean, I know it's the last thing we want to think about right now because uh, dark, obviously, but it's hard not to think of, especially when Politico magazine releases Operation London Bridge to the public. Yeah, what is that? This magazine somehow got documents showing each and every step in detail what'll happen when that fateful day arrives. There'll be phone calls to the prime minister, of course, would be first. Customs require that the prime minister is informed by the monarch private security. Flags will fly at half mast, of course, but oddly enough in this document, the queen's death is referred to as D-Day. Yeah, nine days of protocols will follow afterwards and after a service at St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle, that's when Queen Elizabeth will be buried with King George VI. It's dark, but I mean, imagine reading about this one morning in 2021. What an odd article. What a, what a brutal way to wake up. Number seven, secret PowerPoint. Yeah, nothing sounds less cool than a leaked 41 slide PowerPoint presentation, but I'll do my best. Here we go. When it comes to the NSA, odds are this PowerPoint is going to be pretty juicy, right? This slideshow was often used to train US intelligence. And I got to say 41 pages. That's it. I did 45 on medieval knights in high school. That's all I'm saying, step your game up. This program was called PRISM. You probably heard about this, this is a big deal. And it cost about $20 million a year. This was the highlight of the Snowden leak. PRISM kicked off back in 2007. See, originally they partnered with Microsoft, but once they were attached to Apple come 2012, that's when things got a little dicey, as most things are with Apple. The PowerPoint confirmed that the NSA has access to servers belonging to massive tech giants, Google, Skype, YouTube even. So I don't know, search history, you may wanna delete that stuff. There was a summit in California, which originally originally was tense, the United States was accusing China of cyber attack, but right after Edward Snowden leaked the PRISM tea, they didn't have much power at said summit. So China and Europe's citizens were obviously not too pleased here. Yeah, leaked data, we don't, we don't like hearing about that. There's a, this one gets a little worse. Number six. Big Brother is watching. Even allies of the United States are not safe here, okay? Thanks to Snowden, our boy again, gotta mention him a couple times in this list. At the end of October 2013, it was leaked that the states were spying on Germany, France, and Spain. It's a lot of people, it's a lot of eyes, a lot of spies. The NSA had tapped into 35 phones, not just a couple of dudes. They were spying on 35 world leaders, one of which was German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who called out the NSA after finding out and said this act of snooping was just unacceptable between friends. Ah, oh, brutal. She said the F word too. She's like, hey, we were friends, pal. Don't go through my phone. Don't swipe left in the photos, okay? Betrayal. Well, it was also reported that the NSA was monitoring phone, like regular phone calls in Spain for the average folks. So if you thought you were off the hook, you're not, literally and figuratively. They monitored about 60 million calls in one month. So yeah, world leader or not, be a little concerned about these guys, maybe. You know, save some tea for in person. You don't want to give up all that good stuff on the phone. Number five, leaked voters. Back in December 2015, personal information from 191 million voters was leaked to the public online. Yeah, this feels like yesterday. I remember this all unfolding. I was like, what? How? Researcher Chris Vickery found this data while conducting a security investigation. See, Forbes had described Vickery as, dare I say, a good hacker. They're what's referred to as these white hat hackers. They find weak spots in security without sabotaging or exploding them, you know? Unlike Snowden or other people. That's the key, that's the Donnie difference. 79% of those eligible to vote were the victims here, so it was a big one. All their names, addresses, birth dates, phone numbers, emails, you name it, things you don't want other people knowing, let alone third parties, were all out there. If you could vote, you were exposed. We're still unsure who was behind this entire leak. CSO Online and databreaches.net suggest that the information more than likely came from software provider Nation Builder. But CEO Jim Gillum announced that that was not the case and they did not create the database. Although he conceded that it is possible that some of the information that it contains may have come from the data we make available for free to campaigns. He's like, no, we didn't do it, but maybe we did. <laughs> it's like, okay. So a third party took what they could and really ran with it. That's terrifying. Time to change your email again 
button. Number four, psychoelectronic weapons. Yeah, this sounds like something Iron Man uses. It doesn't sound too chill now, does it? Psychoelectronic weapons. The first time Curtis Waltman heard of these uh, was by accident, as you could have guessed. He was receiving documents via Yahoo and they were not what he expected. See, originally he had filed a Freedom of Information Act request to Washington State Fusion Center. See, he was trying to find out more on the clashes between Antifa and the far right, but he got a response and it was all about experimental weapons. Guy gets a zip file back in return called EM effects on human body. He's like, big shiny tune six? He's like, what? I didn't ask for this. Way too many viruses in that one. Big, Big Shiny Tune 7, I think, was a good one. That's a good one. In this document, he saw diagrams on these weapons and the effects that they have on people. There's muscle quaking, all body pain. One of the effects allowed users to control their dreams. Is this a weapon? This is this is pretty remarkable. This was clearly sent by mistake. Ah, the only emails I get are student loans, and those ones are not by mistake. Those ones are definitely on purpose. They're like, Mr. Taylor. I'm like, oh, oh God, they found me. Number three, quantum computer. Ah, this next one's pretty eye-opening. Here we go. Computers are getting more and more advanced by the day. Deep fakes are also getting way too good. I've fallen for way too many fake trailers. I thought they were doing a Back to the Future reboot with Tom Holland and Robert Downey Jr. for like four days. All fake. Whole thing's fake. But thanks to our man Snowden, the OG secret revealer, it was reported in the Washington Post on January 2nd, 2014, that the NSA is working hard at creating their own computer. Yeah, how fun was What's that one be? I wonder if it can run Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 without getting hot. No computer can do that. It's called the Quantum Computer, and it costs about 80 million to create this program. This computer is safely stored in a massive room sized metal box, not intimidating at all. It's part of a program called Penetrating Hard Targets. So it can break encryptions for just about anything finance records, medical, your old MSN, hopefully, maybe, probably, definitely not. What a nightmare that would be. The NSA is well on their way to breaking every form of public encryption. This Quantum Computer can theoretically break through any RSA encryption, which for the average computer today, that takes years. This supercomputer they're working on can break through a lot faster. We can get through in days, even hours. So you better clear that search history now while you still can. Thanks for the hot tip, Snowden. I was going to switch to PC gaming, but you know what? I'll wait it out. I'll wait till this new one comes out. It looks a little faster. Number two, WikiLeaks Warlogs. Companies have to be somewhere, right? We're in a film studio in Toronto. We go to a certain place. We leave said certain place in a said certain area. Right? Where do places like WikiLeaks live? How do they stay secure? Well, in Stockholm, apparently, buried under 100 feet below street level in an old nuclear bunker. That's where right next to Pirate Bay. They're neighbors, actually. They knock on the cement walls. Today, it's a facility owned by Swedish internet provider Banoff. Now, this is where they keep servers for WikiLeaks, but Julian Assange, front runner of this whole operation, his hard drive is in this bunker behind a two-foot steel door accompanied by numerous backup generators, so he's secure. In October 2010, WikiLeaks actually published Army Field reports from 2004 to 2009. Now, it's one of the biggest leaks in US history. This report confirmed that there were over 66,000 civilian deaths in the Iraq war out of the 109,000 confirmed in total. That's horrible. This leak also suggested that some American troops were classifying civilians as enemies in their statistics afterwards. These numbers were from 2004 to 2009. One of the biggest leaks in US history, no doubt about it. And finally, number one, Watergate. Yeah, it's not an internet leak, but it's too good to talk about. This is OG, come on. We have to finish on Watergate. In the middle of 1972, there were five men who were all arrested for breaking into the Democratic National Committee headquarters at the Watergate Hotel in Washington, DC. Now, it was pretty obvious they intended on bugging the place. They looked like spy kids. They had all the gears. They were, you know, it was fishy. As the year went on, the election came closer and closer, and then all of a sudden, out of the woodwork comes this anonymous source who fed information to Washington Post reporters that apparently the Watergate bugging incident was a massive campaign of political spying and sabotage kicked off by none other than President Nixon himself. Yeah, he was trying to get that re-election. Now, despite this information leak and it being reported in the news and all that good stuff, Nixon was still re-elected, even though he was involved in this entire scandal. These men were clearly linked to a fundraising group for Nixon, but his administration just kept denying any involvement. It wasn't until a year later in 1972 when reporters Carl Bernstein and Bob Woodward, they also came forward and exposed more stuff. Yeah, they exposed the administration's role in this entire scandal and they had an inside source, an FBI agent named Mark Feltz, and this ultimately led to Nixon resigning later in 1974. The first president to do so. Number 10. No crown, no problem. Okay, directly after his father died in 1936, King Edward VIII 
took the throne. But the tides quickly turned when less than a year later, he renounced his position. Now, this was huge. This was a massive scandal right off the bat. This is not something that's taken lightly in the royal family. Turns out the woman responsible for stealing his heart was that of Wallace Simpson, American socialite who'd already been divorced once before. And at this point, she was working through her second divorce, so you could only imagine how folk reacted to that, right? His proposal to Simpson, of course, caused social and political backlash. The Church of England wasn't so chill with Edward marrying somebody who had already been divorced, so Edward was forced to abdicate. He had to, okay? Edward and Simpson then tied the knot in 1937, and they stayed together until Edward's death much later in 1972. So, dare I say, it was worth the trouble. Number nine, Guantanamo Files. Back in April 2011, a pretty heavy leak hit the web. And no, it wasn't Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man 3, it wasn't any of that. And no, it wasn't Avengers 1. WikiLeaks, who I covered in part one of the series, they also released the Guantanamo Files, and they exposed the way prisoners were treated in Guantanamo Bay. In total, there were 779 documents that got released, and in said documents, it was discovered that innocent civilians, both from Pakistan and Afghanistan, were both being held there without any charges. It's brutal, there's some shady stuff going on. The age ranges as well for these prisoners go on from very young adults to an 89 year old. So again, many of these these prisoners are being held without any charges and they're really young and really old, being treated like crap. This is a heavy leak and in these documents we also see the way these prisoners are treated in detail. The way information was extracted from them was, it was horrible, it was straight up torture. Number eight, off-road vehicles. Where we're going, we don't need roads. We're living in a pretty amazing time, I guess, when it comes to space exploration and travel and stuff. We recently sent off the James Webb Space Telescope to see even more of our universe. We're getting bigger and better, we're going deeper. 2020 was also the year where UFOs were just on the news. But what happens when these two worlds collide? Figuratively speaking, of course. Just over a year ago, an astrophysicist by the name of Eric Davis, he gave his classified briefing to the Defense Department mentioning these off-world vehicles. Secret off-world vehicles. What could he possibly mean by that? I mean, I mean the ISS, that is technically an off-world vehicle. Spaceships aren't new, you know what I mean? Well, he added the fact that these off-world vehicles were being made somewhere else as well. Not just, you know, on Earth. Like some space BMW? I don't know. Former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid is quoted in a Times article saying he believes that crashes of objects of unknown origin may have occurred and that any recovered materials should be studied. Okay, more than fair. Eric Davis also once produced this report to try and convince the government to invest in time travel and use wormholes to achieve such a task. Yeah, this is the Christopher Nolan segment of the list. This guy knows some stuff, for sure. He actually said he studied these crashed materials and his conclusion is that there's no way humans could have ever created it. Yeah, I don't know, alien materials? What do you guys think? Do we, are we hiding alien tech? I think so. Number seven, weaponized lightning. This whole time I thought Thor worked for the Avengers. Apparently he's working for the CIA. How fun is that? Nice. Back in the late 60s, the scientist, who remains anonymous to this day, always a good sign, well, they figured out how to weaponize and bottle lightning. Can't imagine what Thor. They were determined to weaponize lightning to create Thor, I guess. That way, there was little to no evidence left over after a planned attack. The idea, as crazy as it sounds, is pretty genius. Once it got online, people read it, and they're like, oh, this actually, this is a good idea. It never made it to its final stages, thankfully, but when Forbes was allowed to release these declassified CIA files, we got a better idea of what was going on in the sky at the time. The plan was to draw these extremely thin metal wires from airplanes or rockets, whatever the case, something flying high in the sky. They would drop a metal fishing line through the clouds and then send many volts of electricity down to an enemy camp or whatever. That would for sure mess up their communications if it had worked. If, again, leaked ideas that never came to fruition. Number six, spinning cube. Remember when UFO footage was being leaked in 2020? We had Senate hearings and we just didn't care. So many of these UFO documents ended up online from the 2020, you know, alien leak, whatever that was. That was crazy. Some are too strange not to mention, evidently. Especially in a list of government secrets. Well, of course, we're going to talk about some aliens. One of these leaked videos, I can't lie, there's, there's some odd behavior going on here. In this video, we see a spinning alien cube almost. Yeah, it was spotted over Missouri and then only a couple hours later, it was seen again, but this time 700 miles away. So whatever it was, it's moving quite fast. 44-year-old Matthew Jandeka was minding his own business, hanging out on the porch when this caught his attention. It was a sunny day and the light reflecting off the cube caught his eye. But a day earlier, another Another dude, 30 year old Justin Johnson, saw the exact same thing. He saw it driving home. He saw the light and the reflections also caught his eye in the sky. At first he thought maybe it was a balloon, but the movements were too odd, you know? Maybe it's another drone project. Uh, what do we think? Is there cube, cube aliens now? Some geometric aliens coming down? Someone call Shia LaBeouf. We have more cubes. We have space cubes. Number five always listening. I mentioned earlier in part one that summit where the United States originally wanted to 
call out China for cyber attacks, but instead Snowden ended up leaking a PowerPoint training slideshow, and now the tables were all of a sudden turned. Snowden ended up revealing himself as the spy kid on June 12th, and he said that he planned on remaining in Hong Kong until he was kicked out. But in his first press interview since coming out, he informed South China's Morning Post that the NSA was hacking Chinese and Hong Kong computers since way back in 2009. More specifically, Snowden said the NSA hacked the Chinese University of Hong Kong, aka the heart of all internet traffic in Hong Kong. That's pretty eye-opening. It's a lot of stuff. You're seeing a lot of seeing a lot of secrets in there. But there's many who see this hack as a good thing, of course. Citizens want to know what their governments are up to. I personally would love to know if the NSA was rummaging through my chats. You know what I mean? So a poll was conducted on June 10th. Turns out 44% of Americans were on board with Snowden's outing, and 42% of Americans say that he's a bad boy. Yeah, 57% were not a fan of the NSA's actions, while 37% were on board. Number four, friends without benefits. Even allies of the United States aren't safe here. Thanks to Snowden, at the end of October 2013, it was leaked that the states were spying on Germany, France, and Spain. Yeah, the NSA tapped into 35 phones, not just a couple of guys this time around. They were spying on 35 world leaders, one of which was German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who called out the NSA right after finding out and said that this act of snooping was just unacceptable between friends. Yeah, she said friends, that's crazy. It's like when you show your buddy a photo on your phone and then they start swiping. You're like, hi, what are you doing? Betrayal, what are you doing? Now, as you hear this, you're thinking, well, I'm not a world leader, I don't care. What's the big deal here? What can going through my phone really do? Well, it was also reported that they were monitoring phone calls in Spain for the average folk. Yeah, just listening in, seeing seeing what your aunt's up to. They monitored around 60 million calls in one month. So yeah, world leader or not, I'd be a little concerned. They're listening to your secret recipes. I hope no one's listening to my phone calls. I mean, who makes phone calls anymore, you know? I see a phone call come in and I'm like, eh. If it's important, they'll leave a message. That's what I say. Even the NSA. Leave a message. Number three, bird drones. Bird drones is not a new concept by any means, but it's fun. It's so fun, we gotta talk about it whenever we can. Back in the early 60s, the CIA had this secret program called Project Aqualine, where they used small drones with a low radar cross section, a little camera almost, all that nice spy gadget stuff. They began working on this back in 1965, believe it or not, and the first prototype was it was a bit obvious. It was big. It weighed over 100 pounds. It was this massive eagle looking camera, but the only way to catch it was to fly it into a net, which broke something almost every single test flight. So cut to 2022. Yeah, there's probably a drone pigeon out there somewhere watching you. Olivia just did a couple lists on hidden cameras. So birds, drones, I mean, probably. Some people think pigeons aren't even real. Some people think pigeons are drones sent by the government to watch us. I don't know. I think pigeons are pigeons. They look like pigeons. They found a hidden camera in a cactus. So sleep in fear, people. Number Two, backup files. When Glenn Greenwald kicked off this whole thing in 2013 with Snowden, it was his massive security breach, of course. Snowden was, of course, in immensely hot water, but he was also ahead of the game right from the start, before even getting caught, before even coming out. Snowden had told Greenwald that if anything crazy were to happen to him in the future, well, he'll just leak even more information. Nice, we love backup files. You got dirt? Well, I got more dirt. Everyone's dirty. If Snowden was unable to access these encrypted documents on one of his four laptops, then it was set up to automatically send said private documents to higher ups and keep it going. AKA the people directly involved would still stay out of the picture. On top of that, Snowden reminded the Guardian that he has many more secrets to spill. Specifically, the NSA surveillance systems. Yeah, this is why you make backups, people. Duly noted, Snowden. I put this backup script in another Google Doc, just in case the NSA comes around. And finally, number one, Pine Gap. Going to the land down under for this one. Sorry, I said under. She just said under, but I like it. Australia is fun. Pine Gap is a secret military compound built around the Cold War. It's been described as Australia's Area 51. Australia's Area 51? Area 51? I don't know. I, I love Australian accents, but I can't do them. I can't. I can't. I can't do it. I don't like spiders either. All we know, the secret base, this mysterious island, was revealed back in 2013 thanks to, you guessed it, Edward Snowden. This guy releases everything. We need another Snowden to come around. This guy's the OG. Turns out this island is not a resort. In fact, it's actually a satellite surveillance base that runs espionage operations. The NSA uses this facility for global interception and they also collect internet and telephone communication records. Again, all those secret recipes that you're telling to your aunt, they're listening, they're taking it. They're like, oh, extra garlic, you bet. That makes sense. Back in the 70s, around 400 American families just happened to move to the nearby Alice Springs. Yeah, not a coincidence at all. Just that many families rolling in. Yeah, no government operations. Just, you know, people just decided to move here. What does your husband do? Oh, he surfs the web waves. He surfs the waves. The waves, just the waves. Just that's it. Nothing to do with the web or online. Pine Gap, bring your kids and bathing suit. Have fun. Starting off this countdown, we have the NSA spy hubs. We all know that the NSA is spying on us, okay? That's old news. I mean, in 2013, former contractor for the CIA, 
Edward Snowden revealed that the NSA was collecting phone records of millions of Americans and spying on us through our phone calls. Well, it turns out they have multiple top secret bases. Half of them, we don't even know where they're located. We just know that they're out there. Somewhere. These spy hubs are often windowless skyscrapers. There are some in Atlanta, Dallas, Chicago, Los Angeles, New York City, San Francisco, Seattle, and of course, Washington, DC. These buildings, though, aren't regular buildings. No, no, of course not. They are highly secure and guarded. In fact, they are built to withstand terrorist attacks, nuclear attacks, and natural disasters. So not only do we not know where they're located, we don't know what they're doing in all of these hubs, besides spying on American citizens. So you better behave. They're watching. Always watching. Number nine, a fateful turn of events. Queen Victoria's reign began in 1837 and it lasted until the Queen's death in 1901. At just age 18, Alexandrina Victoria had to rise up to the throne. She was born, of course, on May 24th, 1819, and Queen Victoria was actually fifth in line when she was born. So right off the bat, it was actually highly unlikely that she would ever get to the crown in the first place. And then one by one, all of her family members suddenly began passing away. In four years, three of Victoria's cousins passed, and then her father and grandfather died, both a week apart from one another. So by the time 1830 rolled around, Victoria was only 11 years old, and already she was next up. She was next in line for the throne. Number eight, the Irish famine. The Great Famine took out a lot of people, not just Victorian women, right? Back in 1845, a potato crop that a lot of the Irish population relied on were just suddenly no longer available. A group of microorganisms wiped them all out, and in result, around one million folk died or had to leave. It was draconian law and British ruling that made the exported food hard to reach people, right? Now this famine led to Irish independence and of course anti-union movements. The show Victoria actually pulled no punches back in 2017. An episode showed the true happenings behind the Great Irish Famine and behind the role that Queen Victoria herself played in coming to the aid of her then subjects. The death of at least one million. This was a very dark seven years in Irish history. Historian Christine Keenely spoke out and says, quote, there is no evidence that she had any real compassion for the Irish people in any way, end quote. Number seven, Kensington system. So as if that wasn't already stressful enough, Victoria was brought up under something called the Kensington system, which if you haven't heard before is pretty awful. Victoria's mother, Duchess Victoria of Kent, created the system to control her daughter. She literally isolated the child from mates or family members, anybody, you name it. Her mother did this to keep her pure. Victoria only had two playmates growing up. She had her half-sister, Princess Theodora of Lenigan, and the Duchess's attendant, Sir John Conroy, his daughter, Victoire. I mean, I only had three friends growing up, so like, I get it, but this is just cruel, you know what I mean? Give her some options. She shared a room with her mother until she was the queen. She literally couldn't walk down the hallway alone. Victoria has reflected on her childhood, and it's confirmed that she hated John Conroy for manipulating her mother. So, it's very confirmed that she was not happy with any of this. She referred to him as Demon Incarnate. Number six, Meghan Markle solo strut. Okay, back in May 2018, we all set our alarm, okay? We woke up and we watched this royal wedding. It was lovely. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, his new duchess. This was historic. At the historic wedding, Thomas Markle was a no-show. Meghan just walked down the aisle by herself in front of, you know, a billion people watching at home or streaming it, no pressure. It was thought that at the time, this was because of Thomas's health issues. See, prior, Thomas suffered a heart attack just days before the wedding. So of course nobody was upset. It was, you know, of course noted though. Now, cut to a year or so later, Thomas and the Duchess aren't as close, it seems. There's some beef unfolding. Thomas even spoke out against his own daughter. There was a scandal where Meghan spoke to Oprah, you know, Oprah. It was that whole tell-all experience. Megan actually said to her father, if you tell me the truth about working with paparazzi, then we can help. But he wasn't able to do that, and that for me has really resonated, especially now as a mother. Number five lead-based makeup. When I started here at the studio, I was like, okay, gotta put on some face cream maybe, drink some water, get rid of like some of these bags, I hope. Finding a skincare routine of any sorts is easy now. The lovely World Wide Web has our backs. It's a wonderful era that we live in now, but the cosmetic game back in the 18th century, <laughs> oh boy, not so fun, was it? In the 18th century, lead mixed with vinegar was used as makeup. Yeah, you would look more pale, you would have the Victorian look, gotta have those veins popping out, all serious and such, with a splash of sulfur, of course, to make those freckles 
pop. Queen Elizabeth I used cosmetics containing lead, mercury, and arsenic. The same poison that took out George III and Napoleon Bonaparte. Yeah, not safe at all. In fact, arsenic was on the priority list of hazardous substances. So yeah, toxic metal exposure is still an issue we're facing in this era, let alone the Victorian era. Number four. Close cousins. The life of Queen Victoria wasn't anything like a fairy tale, obviously. So when you think about the royal family, at least when I was younger, I thought being a queen or a king meant you could just eat chocolate all day, play chess, and then attend a gala. Yeah, you just look cute and go to the ball every single day. No, it's not quite. Uh, it's not quite that really at all. Queen Victoria had to do everything herself. She even had to propose to Prince Albert. Like, come on. Now it's royal tradition that nobody shall propose to a reigning monarch, so it made sense. So cut to October 1839. Victoria asked. Albert for his hand in marriage. We love it. It all started when the pair was 17 years old. Victoria met the young prince, of course, at Kensington Palace during the Kensington system, and they were put together because Victoria's uncle felt like this could be beneficial down the road. Yeah, first cousins getting married sounds bizarre, but as you've seen on Game of Thrones or even this channel, it's quite common. Number three, Boy Jones and other attempts. Being the queen and all, a security team is always needed, and during her reign, there were multiple, multiple attempts to harm the young queen. The first attack was in 1840. An 18 year old man named Edward Oxford fired towards the Queen's carriage. Probably took 14 seconds to prepare, right? When Edward was accused of high treason, he was actually found not guilty due to insanity. A couple years later, in 1842, it happened again. This time, two men fired at her. Again, both missed, not great aim. In 1849, her carriage was then attacked by William Hamilton. In 1850, as the carriage was passing the gates of Buckingham Palace, Robert Pate, a retired soldier, ran up and started hitting her with his cane. Victoria was okay during all this, but of course, she was shook. This is some dark history. But then things got a little worse. If you haven't heard of Boy Jones or anything that happened there, I saved it for the end because it's, uh, yeah, it's quite creepy. A teenager stalked the queen back in 1838 until 1841. It was quite a long time. His name was Edward Jones. This guy somehow managed to break into Buckingham Palace more than once. The guy just knows a route in and he would break in often and would hide under the queen's sofa. Yeah, he wouldn't break anything or steal anything. He would just sit on her throne. But he would also do one of the worst things ever. He would go through her, uh, her drawer. Number two, Bloody Mary. England's first female monarch, Mary I, ruled for just five years. The only surviving child of Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon. Mary took the throne after the brief reign of her half-brother, and they say she was an evil queen, but after my homework, I'd have some chips on my shoulders too. She was married at nine and then at 11. At such a young age, everyone's yelling at you because you're too young to have kids. Like, I couldn't even imagine the pressures that were given to her, right? That's awful. She was promoted and demoted so many times. No wonder she snapped, honestly. Every time she was close to the throne, all of a sudden, her family tree was just rearranged by law, right? How confusing is that? Her dad also decided to go down the other family route. She is infamously remembered for burning 300 English Protestants at the stake, which earned her the nickname Bloody Mary. So yeah, it's horrible, horrible stuff. She really snapped. Her brother found a loophole with religion, so she was like, okay then, just light him up, I guess. She's also remembered as teaming up with her half-sister Elizabeth I and ruling together, making them the first two British queens. She was spoiled from birth, but she was pretty badass, not gonna lie. And finally, number one, Queen Elizabeth's health. The world was left in disappointment when we read that Queen Elizabeth got COVID. I remember early on, Tom Hanks got it and we're all like, eh, come on, Woody. You know, it was kind of rooting for him. But when the queen got it, it was just deflating, right? The 95 year old monarch was celebrating her platinum jubilee, meaning this is now 70 years on the throne. 2022 is a staple for the royal family. And on top of that, the queen has also taken on these royal family scandals. They're unfolding one by one and she's seeing them all. Queen Elizabeth also lost her companion, her husband, Prince Philip passed away April 9th, 2021. So she was quite lonely facing all of these scandals. The most controversial of which was Prince Andrew's settlement with his sexual assault accuser. Yeah, she has to deal with that while she's dealing with COVID. Starting off this countdown, we have the Weipholm experiments. This was a series of experiments in Sweden from 1945 to 1955. It's literally going to make you sick to your stomach when you find out what they did. Basically, they force fed people with mental illness sweets to see if sugar was related to tooth decay. Imagine people just cramming food down your throat against your will. It's very gross. These experiments were conducted by the government and sponsored by the sugar industry. The experiments lasted for about two years, and by then, the teeth of about 50 of the 
the subjects in the experiment had been completely ruined. In our number nine spot, we have the government tax agenda. In a tweet that Elon made on August 11th, 2022, he pointed out perhaps yet another government secret. The US government has been talking about decreasing taxes and making that a focus for Americans. And yes, most recently on the taxpayer's dollar, the government hired 87,000 new IRS agents, AKA the Internal Revenue Service Agency. Is this a dark secret that Elon just brought light to? Is the government saying one thing and doing the other? Possibly. Along with the tweet, Elon said, fate, heart emoji, irony. In our number eight spot, we have the depopulation agenda. In an interview with the Nelk Boys on the Full Send podcast, Elon spoke about how our population is declining, even though we're being told otherwise. He said that we've been pushing the movement of the side hustle boss onto all females and males, and so they want to wait to have children. And then some just don't want to have kids at all, and as a result, the population is decreasing. He went on to explain that the way that you can measure if the population is decreasing or not is the ratio of adult depends to diapers. If there's more depends than diapers, then it's because people aren't having a lot of babies. I thought this to be very, very interesting as I sat for a moment and thought about all the people that I know that don't want kids, and also all the people that I know that are in their 30s and don't feel anywhere ready. Perhaps we will see the results of this in years to come. In our number seven spot, we have the government on Twitter. In a series of many tweets, Elon has been peeling back the layers of Twitter and seemingly trying to expose it as a government orchestrated ruse. From the moment Elon announced that he was going to buy Twitter, people suspected that, you know, he had an agenda, whether it was to implement better free speech policies within the company or whether to expose that the company is actually being used by people and not just bots that have been programmed to push an agenda. In a most recent tweet, Elon posted an article about a former federal law enforcement and intelligence operations, Dan Woods, who claims that 80% of Twitter users are probably bots. Knowing this information, of course, makes it more likely that the government is using it for their agenda. Honestly though, this one doesn't surprise me if true. How many people do you know that still uses Twitter and actually tweets. I know zero. That to me says a lot. Would love to know your thoughts though in the comment section below. In our number six spot, we have who are you trolling? In a tweet from August 1st, Elon shared a meme that stated, a smart man bases his political beliefs on his thoughts. A wise one changes them depending upon who they are trolling. This is a very interesting message that some think seemingly stems from the same message as George Orwell's book, 1984. It's a commentary on the fact that if you feel angry towards anyone in politics, then know that this anger comes from influence in some way and you have been influenced. You will never actually know the truth, only what you're told. This is a darker government secret that people believe that Musk is trying to expose that perhaps it is wise to not feel any sort of emotion and stay neutral to the stories that you are being told and and if you begin to lean any one way, question your anger, and in the case of this tweet, question your trolling and where it came from. In our number five spot, we have no aliens. In the Full Send podcast interview, Elon recently said, if the universe is really 13.8 billion years old, shouldn't there be aliens everywhere? If not, why not? Carl Sagan said there's either a lot of aliens or no aliens, and either one is equally terrifying. If there are no aliens, then what we have here is very rare. Some people believe that perhaps he was revealing here that human beings are unique and perhaps the government doesn't want us to realize this as then we would see life as way more of a precious thing. Perhaps if the world did think that humans were unique, then we would see our life as precious and you know, eat well, take care of ourselves and try to be happy. And that certainly wouldn't be good for any business that benefits from people getting sick and hating life and the world. In our number four spot, we have Area 51. On the Full Send podcast, Elon revealed that Area 51 is not as what people believe it to be. He definitely hinted at the goings on within the secret place, but he made it seem less supernatural and dark as the internet has made it seem. But then of course, some people online think that he would say that because perhaps he's in cahoots with them and they want to get the world off their trail and so they have had him speak about it as if it's nothing special. He did reveal that the government and the people of Area 51 have invented weapons that the public haven't heard of and thought of yet. So perhaps depending on how you interpret that, these weapons could be intended intended for some dark use, but I mean, the very purpose of a weapon is not positive, so of course. <laughs> 
In our number three spot, we have government hypocrisy. Recently, you may have heard about the fact that the USA still has many people in jail that were put in there because of heed, minus the H and throw a W in front. Are you with me? Heed. <laughs> Don't want this video to get dinged. Anyways, there is a lot of people still in jail for this drug and a lot of people find it crazy that this could be the case as throughout the country it has now been legalized. But recently the US government traded a Russian war criminal with Russia to free the women's basketball player who was imprisoned there for this very substance. It feels a little hypocritical. I don't know. On Twitter, Elon said this, maybe free some people in jail for heed here too. And then posted this meme of a man not looking too pleased with his hands on his hips. And the meme said, people in the US in jail for heed while the government trades a Russian war criminal to free a woman's basketball player in jail for heed. <laughs> Is Elon pointing out the hypocrisy in this action and hinting at a weird dark secret agenda that the government might be hiding? Possibly. In our number two spot, we have the MPCs. Again, in the full send interview with the Nalk Boys, Elon speaks about how everyone in the corporate world are like MPCs. <laughs> he said, quote, are you even real? How do we know that you're not an MPC? This had the internet in a frenzy as they contemplated, is Elon pointing out the fact that people in the corporate and political world are possibly MPCs? Is this his subtle way of telling everyone? I mean, he has been trying to get viewers to see that a large part of Twitter is just bots, so there's that. Is this a stretch? Could we be living amongst NPCs? In our number one spot, we have the Epstein list. Jeffrey Epstein is a former business financier who died in prison by supposedly taking his own life in 2019 while awaiting trial on federal trafficking charges. Jeffrey was known as somewhat of a celeb amongst the Hollywood elite, and he is seen in many pictures with many celebs over many decades. Since his arrest, the public have wondered who out of his Hollywood friends were involved in this scandal, as he obviously didn't do it alone. From Bill Clinton to Prince Prince Andrew, there have been many names that have flown on Jeffrey's private jet to his island where everything was said to have taken place. After the most recent trial with Ghislaine Maxwell, Jeffrey's accomplice who was also convicted, an apparent list of celebrities that were involved was given to the court but not released to the public. Elon took to Twitter to comment on this. He uploaded a picture of a meme that said, things I'll never see in my life, with photos of a dragon, dinosaurs, and a unicorn, and the words, the Epstein slash Maxwell client list. He then went on to say, only thing more remarkable than the DOJ, the Department of Justice, not leaking the list is that no one in the media cares Cares. Doesn't that seem odd? He then added, sometimes I think my list of enemies is too short. <laughs> so, insinuating that he will most likely make more enemies after this tweet. Many people believe that he was insinuating that there are people in the government, the Department of Justice, and the media on the list, and that is what Elon is trying to get the public to see. It would certainly make sense as to why the media is not reporting about it. Starting off this countdown, we have the prisoners. In 1902, American doctors stationed in the Philippines decided to do some experiments on their own. First, they withheld proper nutrition from 29 of their prisoners. They did so in order to induce beriberi, which is a disease caused by lack of vitamin B1. Lack of vitamin B1 can cause difficulty walking, loss of feelings in the hands and feet, and loss of muscle function. It can cause irreversible damage to your nervous system and heart. And they forced these prisoners into this. Four of the test subjects died as a result. Then later that year, another physician decided to inject five prisoners with the bubonic plague. The prisoners had no clue about this and they became very sick. Then four years later in 1906, Dr. Richard P. Strong infected more prisoners with cholera. All subjects became sick and 13 of them sadly died. Most of the tests were done to see what disease they should use in case of biological warfare. In our number nine spot, we have secret affairs. It is no secret that JFK had an affair with Marilyn Monroe and Bill Clinton allegedly had his affair. But honestly, let's not be so naive as to think that they are the only ones. Apparently, Lyndon Johnson was allegedly known to be quite the ladies man within the Oval Office. And for decades, there have been rumors of presidents that were also in the closet about their sexuality. But still, most of that is, you know, hush hush, probably because of all the press and attention that would arise if such things were revealed, so makes sense. Also, the more people know about you personally, the more you become vulnerable to judgment and possible dislike, and so remaining somewhat of a mystery in order to control how the public sees you is definitely in every president's best interest. In our number eight spot, we have President John Quincy Adams. Look, 
If the presidents become old and incapable of working, or if they turned out to be a little mentally unstable, you're probably not going to know about it. Why? Because in the government's eyes, the less you know, the better. The presidents are just one person, and they probably aren't the only ones that make the decisions. And so from the government's perspective, if you're able to be kept out of the loop, then that's just what they're going to do. Perhaps not right, but what can we do? Which is why it is not surprising to find out that President John Quincy Adams, the US's sixth president, had possibly gone a little crazy while he was in office. Apparently, he believed that the world was hollow and even helped fund a program that would help drill a hole into the ground to try to contact the mole people and begin trading negotiations. Even in the 1800s, this was known to be a hoax, so no wonder they covered this one up. In our number seven spot, we have George Washington. As great as he was for the American people, apparently one thing that he kind of sucked at was war. Apparently, he was not a good military commander, and when it came to strategy, he lost every major battle that he fought. Apparently, once when he was supposed to capture a French fort, his men accidentally open fired on a British unit. Oops. His poor commander skills would have probably hindered the public's perception on how he was an exceptional leader. So it was probably best that the public didn't know about this. It makes sense as to why the government protected this secret. He ended up being what some think to be one of the greatest presidents, so that was probably a good decision. In our number six spot, we have political clubs. Look. It's no secret that so many presidents and political figures have been tied to clubs and cults and groups, and they have been accused of some pretty unfathomable things. But does that mean every president and political figure is a part of them? Of course not. Regardless, there's no proof, and we can only speculate based on evidence we have, and the evidence is limited. There are pictures, though, of some of the past presidents being a part of specific clubs, such as President Ronald Reagan and Richard Nixon on Robbins Island, where there was believed to be a cult-like club on that island at the time. But who knows? That's kind of purely speculation. Regardless, we know that the government will continue to protect these specific clubs and their secrets, and nothing will change in that respect anytime soon. Coming up in our number five spot, we have President Roosevelt's secret. This one is purely speculation, but would be insane if it was proven to be true. The story of the attack on Pearl Harbor is known around the world because of how horrendous it was. We have all been told the story of the attack being completely unexpected and the country being blindsided. But there is some speculation as to whether that's the whole story or not. Word on the street is that allegedly, President Roosevelt actually cut off trade to Japan, and people say that he allegedly told other countries to not trade with Japan, leaving Japan in a state of panic. The attack was supposedly a response to this decision, and therefore, it wouldn't be entirely unexpected if it were proven to be true. Now, America was at war, and the Japanese were technically on the opponent's side, so that decision was probably an attempt to get Japan to change positions. But in any case, crazy stuff if it were true. In our number four spot we have TV programs are. Allegedly, the initial reason why TV programs were created was with the purpose to be able to program the masses and control the narrative around the war and what was happening in the world. Experiments such as people being shown a train coming at them and the conclusion of their reaction to run away and think it to be real showed the power of imagery and how it can influence our emotions, how it can create real fear. The government knows this, and the government and presidents use this to their advantage, especially the presidents that have the media on their side. Ever wonder why everyone is super uneasy during election time and filled with fear and chaos and then all of a sudden when the election is done, it all goes away? Make up whatever opinion you like on this, but it is fascinating to observe and it is almost laughable that we went about calling TV shows TV programs for so long without even realizing what we were saying, but they knew. In our number three spot, we have Thomas Jefferson's stage fright. This isn't so much terrifying as it was seemingly terrifying for Jefferson to experience, but apparently Thomas Jefferson was actually allegedly a horrible public speaker and was terrified of it. People believe that perhaps he just had a stuttering problem, but apparently that is the reason as to why throughout his presidency he only gave two speeches in total. Lordy, that is quite a secret. I truly wonder how they kept that one a secret. Well, anyways, regardless, he was known for being brilliant and is known for making great improvements to the American society, but who knows? Maybe if that was common knowledge, the public may have been hard on him for it and he might not have done as good of a job. So maybe it's best that we didn't know. 
In our number two spot, we have restricted areas. Okay, this is another obvious one because obviously the governments of the countries of the world are protecting all of the restricted areas in their countries, including the secret presidential hideaways, which we know exist. But in any case, there are restricted areas around the world, such as secret bunkers for the presidents, but also a whole town called Mercury in Nevada, Area 51 in Nevada, North Base, Secret Base in Canada, Menwith Hill Royal Air Force Station in the UK, that's leased to the US. So many restricted areas around the world with secrets that I'm sure we can't even imagine. The potential things that lie within these secret places is hard to imagine. I bet you there is just so many things that would blow our minds, and I'm not just talking about secret presidential affairs that I'm sure happen. We're talking aliens, obviously. Coming up at our number one spot, we have the Presidential Book of Secrets. Allegedly, there is a book of secrets that has been passed down from US president to US president over the years, and it was revealed in the popular movie National Treasure, one of my personal favorites, not gonna lie. This is a book that is allegedly hidden in the library at the White House, and only the librarian knows of its location, in case, you know, something happens to the president. President Obama hinted at this book being real on a talk show interview once. Some speculate that it was complete sarcasm, but on another occasion, he did did say that Donald Trump would learn a series of deep secrets when he got into the office, so that's suspicious. Regardless, if it was real, he's not about to reveal that to us because it's a secret. Starting off this countdown, we have the spies. Tons of people are afraid that the government is spying on them. It's thought that they can tap into our phones and watch us and listen to our calls, even though I don't know why they would want to. Like, what are they gonna see me scrolling through like Instagram all day? It's not a pretty sight. Now, we can't really prove that they do, but recently a post on Reddit revealed that they are tracking us. So I don't know if this is a thing outside of Canada, but it is in Canada. So Apple and Android phones now have a COVID-19 sensor on them. Basically, this allows the government to track your every move. A couple of weeks ago, a lot of cell phone users were having phone disruptions, and that's apparently when the tracker was put on the phones in secret. But it's not on all phones. Once you update your phone, then it's automatically turned on. Don't believe me? Well, the post says that for iPhone users, go to settings, privacy, health, and then you'll see it, but it's not yet functional. For Android users, go to settings, then Google settings, and it should be there. This is said to be able to notify you if you've been near someone that has the virus. But it's also a way for the government to track your every move. Seriously, why would they have this feature and then just like not tell us about it? Why is everything done in secrecy? They're up to something. In our ninth spot, we have the malaria tests. In the late 1940s, a group of men were infected with malaria before being starved for five days. While being starved, some of them were subjected to hard labor. Those men lost 14 pounds within a few days. They then were treated for their malaria with a number of drugs. What's wild is that this study was always kept a secret. In fact, most studies from the 1940s to 60s were never covered by the media. And if they were, the focus was, oh my God, the government might find a cure. It's amazing the work that they're doing. The focus was never on how they were finding the cure and their poor test subject. In our eighth spot today, we have the pregnant women. In the late 1940s, a number of researchers were testing diethylstilvestrol, which is a synthetic estrogen on pregnant women. They thought this would help women against pregnancy complications, but it sadly did the exact opposite. A number of women ended up miscarrying or giving birth to low birth weight babies. None of the women knew that they were being experimented on in the first place. If they had known, they probably wouldn't have risked it. In our seventh spot, we have the syphilis experiment. In the early 1950s, the government controlled a syphilis study on men in Guatemala. Their aim was to find out how syphilis and other diseases spread. Sadly, not much is known about these experiments because the government records were destroyed years after the program was shut down in 1956. What we do know though is that the men were exposed to dudes infected with this disease, but they later found that that didn't spread the infections quick enough. So they decided to inject the disease into the men. They did so by two ways. One, by making a medicine with this disease and putting it on their downstairs eggplant or by injecting it directly into their spine. 
What made this worse is that there were no age restrictions to these tests, so they were targeting the young too. Some declined drastically in health. Plus, a number of test subjects were left untreated so that they could study the progression of the infections as well as the damage it would cause. In our sixth spot, we have the Manhattan Project. The Manhattan Project is the project that produced the world's first atomic bomb. They conducted a number of tests, including detonating a series of bombs in a New Mexico desert. They also conducted a number of tests on humans to see the effects that radiation would have on us. One of the tests included monitoring nuclear technicians for the effects of radiation exposure. The technicians had no clue that they were being studied. Some fell extremely sick. One woman even suffered from kidney failure. That's when the workers began to wonder if they were getting sick from the radiation. Later, more tests were done on humans. This time, they were injected with polonium and other radioactive elements. In the end, hundreds of people ended up being injected or fed with plutonium, which is one of the most dangerous substances in the world. Sadly, they targeted individuals with disabilities. Over 57 children with disabilities and more than 100 adults with disabilities were injected with plutonium against their will. You're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the drug tests. Over the years, the government has sponsored a number of drug tests to see the effects that they have on humans. One involved a professional tennis player, Harold Blower. In 1952, he died after being injected with a fatal dose of a hallucinogenic drug. The US Department of Defense, the Department of Justice, and the New York State Attorney General all worked together to conceal evidence of its involvement in this experiment. They did so for 23 years. They all denied having any part of this. They were like, oh, they, the army was injecting him with drugs? We had nothing to do with that. We didn't know. Yeah, right. In our fourth spot, we have LSD. Dr. Frank Olson was an American bacteriologist and biological warfare scientist that worked for the army and CIA. On November 28th, 1953, Frank died after falling out of a hotel in Pennsylvania. His death is quite controversial because we don't know what truly happened, but there are a lot of theories out there. So apparently on November 19th, Olson was given LSD without his knowledge or consent. Then just days later, he plummeted to his death. Many believe that the government had something to do with this. Either they were drugging him constantly and he became so delusional that he took his own life, or he was in too deep. Apparently days before his death, he attempted to resign. He even told his wife that he made a terrible mistake, and then he mysteriously died. Suspicious, don't you think? In our third spot, we have mental health experiments. Dr. Robert Heath is quite the controversial figure in history, and that's due to the number of tests that he did on patients with schizophrenia. In the studies funded by the US Army, he would dose the patients with LSD before implanting electrodes into their brain and shocking them. He thought that this would cure all their problems. He also would use this on gay men to try and make them straight. In our second spot, we have the monster experiment. In 1939, psychologist Wendell Johnson and his student Mary Tudor conducted something known as the monster experiment. For this, they used 22 young orphans. Now, the study was all about stuttering. They wanted to see if psychological abuse could induce stuttering in children. And turns out, it did. So for this test, they divided the orphans into two groups. One group, the children were praised and treated humanely. In the other group, they were treated the complete opposite. In the end, the children in the negative group developed stutters that they retained for the rest of their lives. And in our number one spot today, we have the mustard gas experiments. In the early part of World War II, it was feared that Germany was going to turn to chemical warfare. So the US Army wanted to be prepared. One way that they prepared was by studying the effects of mustard gas. So they gathered a number of healthy young men who volunteered. However, had they known what they were going to go through, chances are they wouldn't have volunteered. 1,200 volunteers were tested in small teams for several weeks. They were ordered to strip to the waist and then were sent into a chamber and doused with mustard gas. According to one survivor, and I quote, all of the men began writhing around and screaming in pain as the chemical burned through their skin. Some pounded on the walls and demanded to be let out, though the doors were locked and only opened when the time was up. Now, mustard gas causes nasty, nasty burns to the skin. 
and it can also cause uncontrollable bleeding in the lungs if it's inhaled. Now, the men did receive treatment after the experiments, but they were threatened. They said that if they told anyone about these experiments, then they were going to be sent to military prison. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have interception. To start off this list today, let's talk about one of the very first electronic interceptions because, to be honest, this was happening sooner than I would have thought, but in a very different way than what we are used to now. Let's set the stage and take it back to the beginning of the 1900s, the first year of the new century. We are in the midst of the Boer War, which lasted from 1899 until 1902. Prior to this war, the British Royal Navy had installed wireless sets that had been produced by Mark onto their ships. This allowed the British Army to be able to use some limited wireless signaling and communication. During the war, however, nearing the end, things took a bit of a turn. While the British had captured and were holding cities and towns, there were still many dispersed Boer commandos who were out there and were taking to different tactics. They began a guerrilla war, and part of that was by intercepting telegraph messages. Not only did they intercept important messages, but they were even able to capture some of the sets to be able to use them themselves. Number 9. Vault 7 Vault 7 was definitely never meant to make it to the public eye, but unfortunately for the CIA, it got leaked. So what actually is Vault 7? Back in 2017, WikiLeaks started releasing a series of CIA documents. Vault 7 was a group of documents that contained hacking systems that were either developed or otherwise obtained by the CIA. For the most part, it should make you wary of your technology and how the government is using it. Many people know that apps will track our searches and data to learn about us and maybe even sell it to malicious companies, but it's much more than that. Weeping Angel has the ability to turn a Samsung television into a recording device, even if it appears that your television is switched off. Vault 7 also contained the ability to intercept all your iPhone messages before they got encrypted through apps like WhatsApp, Signal, and Telegram. And according to the documents, the CIA can allegedly take over your phone by exploiting vulnerabilities, but Apple has said that they patch these vulnerabilities as soon as they're aware of them. Number 8. Battalion 316 Intelligence Battalion 316 went through a few different names throughout its existence, but it was pretty much always functioning for the same reason. They were an army unit in Honduras that was responsible for carrying out political assassinations, and even kidnapping and causing pain to people who were seen as potential political competitors competition throughout the 1980s. The group received both support and training from the CIA, even receiving their training at United States military bases. They were a military kill squad that definitely wasn't known for being friendly, committing various crimes like terrorism, misogyny, ethnic cleansing, and even so-called crimes against humanity. Their goal to remain in power in Honduras failed, leaving behind a long list of innocent victims. In 1996, members of the US Congress asked President Bill Clinton to release the documentation about the country's involvement with the human rights violations that took place in Honduras, and this is when we learned about the battalion. Number 7. MK Ultra. Let's once again return to the Red Scare and the United States fight against Russians and communism. During the Cold War, they came under the belief that the communists had invented a drug that would allow them to control human minds, and the US wanted a piece of that, starting their own research into the technique under the name Project MK. MK Ultra, trying to find their own mind control substance that could be turned into a weapon. It ran from the 50s to the 60s and led to many unknowing or even unwilling subjects being given illicit substances. The experiments were apparently covertly funded in American universities and research facilities, but it turns out that the experiments also took place in prisons and detention centers in the US, Japan, Germany, and the Philippines. The goal was to destroy the current mind and replace Place it was something new. Attempts included using electric shocks and illicit substances. For some, the experiments were fatal, and many others had their lives completely changed. Number six, Operation Cyclone. Operation Cyclone became known as one of the longest and most expensive covert operations taken on by the CIA, costing around six hundred and thirty million dollars per year for a whole decade. So, what was Operation Cyclone, and why was the government pouring so? 
much cash into it. It was an operation that worked to arm and finance militant Islamic groups during the military intervention by the USSR. The goal was to aid anti-Soviet resistances outside of the United States. They gave loans, aircrafts, weapons and other military assistance to the groups in Afghanistan, costing the United States government billions of dollars for these so called care packages. Eventually the Soviets were pushed out of Afghanistan but conspiracy was still spinning. Many of the weapons ended up being sold in local markets instead of going to the rebels and some people believe that Osama bin Laden and the Al Qaeda received assistance from the US military. Number 5. Operation Ajax In the 1950s a coup took place in Iran and the CIA documents about it weren't released until they were pressured to a total 64 years later. As it turns out the agency played a large role in the coup that led to the end of the current Iranian prime minister, a rise in nationalism and sour US Iranian relationships remaining into the 21st century. The motivation was oil. The US and UK wanted Iran's oil but their new prime minister made it inaccessible to them. So the two countries conspired to overthrow him and get their oil back. The coup seemed to fail and the CIA sent a message to their base in Iran calling it off. But the CIA officer who received it said nah we're not done here. So the next day with crowds allegedly hired by the CIA, the coup or Operation Ajax went through and the prime minister was overthrown. The monarchy and oil fields restored in the country. Anti-western sentiment also being restored and growing to new and extreme levels. Number 4. The Five Eyes Are you familiar with one of the farthest reaching intelligence and espionage agencies in the world? You are probably a part of it and don't even know it. It is the once secret Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance. After World War II, the US and UK came together to create an information sharing alliance as a result of how important communication was for them during the war effort. And in 1956, Canada, Australia and New Zealand were added to this group. The classification status on these documents was USA, UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, eyes only. And that was obviously a bit wordy so they shortened it down to five eyes. It has been operating for 70 years now and is used for surveillance and sharing classified information between the five countries. The alliance was especially important during the cold war when the countries shared a lot of information like the location of Soviet weapons in North America. The alliance was kept a secret until documents of the original UK and USA agreement were released back in 2010. Number 3. Operation PB Success Similarly to Operation Ajax, Operation PB Success was a covert CIA military operation that took place in another country, this time Guatemala. This was another coup that took place only a year after the one in Iran in 1954. At the time, Guatemala had a very new democracy, only being on their second democratically elected president. But the United States saw him as a threat, this being due to his allowance of the Guatemalan Communist Party to act freely and land reform movements that threatened US industries. The CIA then worked through various different plans of action to overthrow the Guatemalan government, including assassination and faking tensions between the country and Honduras. They spread false information, placed anonymous phone calls and hired anti-communist students to create a fake opposition. Eventually the president stepped down and their democracy was seen as unfavorable. The United States training that the Guatemalan military now had led to a war lasting death decades, tearing apart the country. But PB success was a success as it worked and they were able to deny CIA involvement until the documents were released in 1997. Number 2. The Secret War We're once again fighting communism, this time in Vietnam. But while the Vietnam War was taking place, a smaller secret war was taking place in Laos, attempting to stop communism from spreading to Southeast Asia. The Americans essentially used the countries of Laos and Cambodia Cambodia to fight their own war against northern Vietnam and communism, using their tribes as their soldiers. While it was clear that the small armies had no hopes of truly winning against northern Vietnam, the United States and the CIA continued on with their fight, devastating the country and peoples of Laos and Cambodia. They came out of the war with their land and lives completely lost and changed, but the CIA wrote it down in their history books as a success, disregarding the country's sacrifice. The CIA's historical retrospective on the situation not being released until many years later. Number 1. Operation Condor It's the Cold War again 
UN and the United States government are fighting against terrorism, this time under the code name Operation Condor. It was a campaign of political repression and so called state terror that was backed by the US and CIA. It involved many heinous activities like kidnapping, killings, political espionage, and much more, all taking place throughout South America. The CIA chose to describe it as a cooperative effort by the intelligence slash security services of several South American countries to combat terrorism and subversion, but really it was a lot more than that. Condor's key members were Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, Paraguay, Bolivia, and later Brazil. The United States provided them with planning, coordination, technical support, and military training all routed through the CIA. It led to many military dictatorships and numerous deaths throughout South America. And there is so much detail and information on this one that if you want it, you're just going to have to look it up for yourself. Coming in number 10, we have the Empire State Building 103rd floor viewing room. I mean, if you want to see the whole New York skyline and you don't want to break the bank on your trip to the top of the Empire State Building, and you want to grab a drink, you better believe that there's a hotel called The Standard that has all of those things. But for those of you who really want to head to the top of New York and can't do it without popping into the iconic Empire State Building, then I'll have you know that you're not even getting the best view. You spent all that money to go to the top of the Empire State Building only to find out that there is a secret room that you are not qualified to check out. There happens to be a hundred and third floor that you can't get to. This helps the rich and famous see the whole city without tourist crowds. Now I'm sorry, but just going to the front desk and asking if you can get there isn't enough. You actually have to be someone of status. Unless you're very rich, very famous, or a government official, you are not going anywhere near the 103rd floor. I'm sorry, but you're just not important enough. The government and the people who run the building don't want you going up to that floor because it's going to lose its attraction. I'm sorry, but you're going to be stuck on the 102nd floor, looking up, wondering which important people are hovering above you. You. Coming in at number 9, we have PPD-29. Catchy. In 2015, Obama released his new hostage policy, which was called President Policy Directive Number 30. Now, the last publicly announced derivative was PPD-28, which led people to realize that 29 must have been passed under the radar. PPD-29 is clearly a secret national security order. This literally is a secret, so I have no idea what to tell you other than it exists, and in six years time, its declassification will be up for discussion. We may find out sooner if the law ever needs to be executed publicly, although as it's in the national security interest, we probably don't want to find out until it's declassified. Coming into number 8, we have swine flu. Ok, hands up if you actually contracted swine flu. Me! But I wasn't living in the United States, so maybe this doesn't apply. But still, it sucked, although I've never been as skinny as after I recovered. Swings and roundabouts. So it's been 10 years since the outbreak of swine flu, which caused a global pandemic. But actually, it turned out to not be as bad as everyone thought it would be, thank goodness. Nonetheless, 10 years means that documents regarding the government's knowledge on the epidemic are soon to be declassified. It seems from a Forbes article that something shady may have been going on with the government and swine flu. The article suggests that not only were sick pigs not being monitored, but also that the government funded Centre for Disease Control were very protective of their data. They were not fulfilling the public health mission by sharing their findings. Coming into number 7, we have quote unquote sicko jokes. In September 2018, it was revealed that the Cold War era jokes had been discovered among millions of declassified documents regarding Soviet Russia. The CIA's deputy director in the 1980s received a document entitled Sicko Jokes. It was a file of jokes told amongst Soviets themselves about their own leaders. One corker from the era was, a worker stands in line at a liquor store. They say, I've had enough. Save my place. I'm going to shoot Gorbachev. Two hours later, he returns to reclaim his place in line. His friend asks, did you get him? To which they reply, no. The line there was even longer than the line here. Troll a lol a lol, some classic 1989 slash 90 humour. Sure. Gorbachev of course was the last leader of the Soviet Union and at the helm amid its collapse. My point being that if the CIA had a list of jokes about the Soviet Union, they absolutely have documents containing loads of jokes for all political leaders and honestly, I kinda wanna hear them. Building on from that, Soviet secrets are coming into number 6. In the name of access to information, which is something democracies are supposed to champion, the CIA is obliged to declassify documents, 
Sure. One way they get around this is by releasing a whole load at the same time and hoping that the juicy information, the shady information, goes unnoticed in the sea of data. This may or may not have been their thought process when they released millions, actually millions, of Soviet era files in 2017. It's already been revealed that the CIA recruited mind readers to spy on Soviets, with the job title remote viewers in something called Project Stargate. What do the other 12 million files? I always have to reveal? We'll have to wait and see, but like, I don't know, Project Stargate sounded pretty exciting. Okay, I swear. This is the last I will mention Russia in this list, but now seems like a good time to mention Donald Trump's Russia release at number 5. In late 2018, Donald Trump ordered the release of classified documents regarding the Russian interference with the 2016 election. The White House announced that the press had asked the Justice Department and the Director of the National Intelligence to publish secret material. On September the 6th, 2018, he tweeted, maybe declassification to find additional corruption. He was seeming to suggest that there was some kind of deep state working to undermine him. The statement came a year after it was revealed in declassified documents that Russia did actually interfere with the election. By the end of September 2018, Trump had backed down somewhat on the document release and asked a justice watchdog to review the Russian docs. Hmm. Coming into number 4, we have weapons of mass destruction. It has been 18 years since the war on terror began and 16 years since the onset of the Iraq war, when the United States decided to invade the Middle Eastern country. Some documents have already been declassified, the rest may come at the 25 year mark in 2026 and 2028, so not long now. In 2015, the CIA seemingly declassified the documents justifying the war, two years after President Obama declared the war over. The document was from 13 years prior and was supposed to be a justification for the war, but in actuality it revealed that the US were lacking, and I quote, specific information on many key aspects of Iraqi President Saddam Hussein's weapons of mass destruction. Basically, the declassified documents show that it was all a little bit of a ruse. The declassified document led to Congress concluding that the Bush administration had overstated the Iraqi threat. I wonder what else we will learn about about these so called weapons of mass destruction from the documents when they're declassified. Coming into number 3, we have the JFK assassination. John F. Kennedy Jr. was assassinated over 50 years ago, and there are still a lot of questions surrounding his murder. The official line is that the perpetrator was Lee Harvey Oswald, but there are a number of conspiracies that suggest that this isn't the full story. There has been a slow release of classified files on the November 1963 assassination of JFK, but of course, Thousands remain a secret. Donald Trump released further Kennedy files to the public, but the full story is, of course, yet to come. Not all of the documents were released, some were very much held back, so the full story and one of the most high profile deaths of all time is yet to be told. Coming into number 2, we have Guantanamo. Guantanamo Bay was set up by the George Bush administration in 2002. It is a United States prison camp filled mainly with suspected terrorists. Rumours of detainee torture and imprisonment without trial were very much just rumours, until the CIA were forced to declassify a number of reports on the controversial prison. I'll read an excerpt from a Guantanamo Bay document I found in the FBI declassified vault. On a couple of occasions, I entered an interview room to find a detainee chained hand and foot in the fetal position to the floor with no chair, food or water. Most times they had urinated or defecated themselves and had been left there for 18 to 24 hours or more. On one occasion the air conditioning had been purposefully turned up so far that the temperature was so cold. The detainee was barefoot and shaking from the cold. On another occasion the AC had been turned off completely, making the temperature in the unventilated room well over 100 degrees. The detainee was almost unconscious on the floor with a pile of hair next to him. He'd literally been pulling it out throughout the night. The report also mentions the sound torture that had been rumoured. The information was supposed to be declassified in 2031, but during the Obama administration there was a data dump of declassified Guantanamo documents. Again though, there are still thousands of files waiting to be released which will further reveal the extent of government torture and more. Finally coming into number 1, we have 9-11. It has been 18 years since 9-11, so does that mean in 6 years time we're going to find out exactly what happened? 
<sighs> Will we read classified government documents that detail exactly how the planes hit and what it took to melt steel beams? Will we find out more about the alleged pipeline through Afghanistan? Was there advanced knowledge of an attack? Did the government ignore warnings? My guess is we're going to need to wait longer than the usual 25 years for these answers, as likely the classified documents are still pretty sensitive. Some answers are coming though, many documents have already been declassified. The Obama administration famously declassified the final 28 pages of the December 2002 report. This was conducted by the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence and the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. Honestly, like, I think in my lifetime we will have more answers. I really, 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 really hope so. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have SIM cards. We see all the time in movies and shows when people are trying to be super secret, they smash their phone and their SIM card, but as it turns out, maybe we should all be smashing our SIM cards, super secret lifestyle or not. In February of 2015, it was reported that Snowden provided documents that showed that the NSA and GCHQ had hacked into a Dutch company that is responsible responsible for manufacturing and supplying 2 billion SIM cards per year, and they supply places like AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and a variety of other providers. While this hack would suggest that the agencies would then now have access to billions of unique encryption keys, which could potentially allow them to bypass wireless providers and monitor both voice and data transmissions of every user that has a SIM card made by this company. The company did reply to the situation and said that they had been the target of at least two quote particularly sophisticated intrusions, and they suggested that they believed that the NSA and the GCHQ were responsible, but the company then denied that the hack was successful in gaining access to those encryption keys. Coming in at number 9, we have the Mount Rushmore Vault. Now this next one is going to sound like it was pulled out of a comic book, but I will let you know that it is 100% real. Behind Abraham Lincoln's head on Mount Rushmore is a secret tunnel that leads to a massive room that is full of US documents. Like, come on, I remember Team America World Police, they had a secret base in Mount Rushmore, but this couldn't be the truth. But would I lie to you? This was actually the original vision of the man who built Mount Rushmore. And can I just say for a moment that this is probably the most patriotic thing that anyone has ever done? I mean, you could put a flag in your front yard, but that is nothing compared to the amount of work that went into building faces of some of the most famous presidents in America into the side of a mountain. But inside this vault are some government documents. Now, what's on those documents, no one really knows. It could be anything. They could be extremely valuable. It could be the Declaration of independence or it could be just a bunch of boring files that don't really mean anything and you're not going to get invited into, and you are not going to get invited into this vault unless you have some sort of government power coming in at number eight we have the Lehman Brothers secret Times Square building when you look at all of the massive buildings in Times Square you probably think that rent must be super high to have a spot in one of those buildings well you would be right but there is something that is even more valuable than renting the space it's ads if every building in Times Times Square is covered in ads because companies will pay out the butt to have all their stuff promoted up there. And the Lehman Brothers saw this as an opportunity and decided that was all they needed for their building. One of the centerfold buildings in Times Square is owned by the Lehman Brothers and there is nothing in it. If you were to walk around inside this building, you would literally just have open spaces and dangling wires. The whole thing just acts as a massive billboard and it's probably very profitable because they don't need to worry about any building upkeep. Coming in at number 7, we have Ni Hao Hawaii. How big could a secret room be? Well, how about 70 square miles? Well, this one isn't so much a room, but it is very much an island and it is definitely a secret that the government is trying to keep secret from everyone. This place is closed off to visitors. It is a self-sufficient island that only has 130 people living on it, and although the people are allowed to leave, no one is allowed to enter outside of medical services. There are some very strict rules on this island. For one, there is no booze. Just so you know, you wouldn't be able to sneak on the island and have a big party. The people there aren't really into that. Also, there are no guns, which is probably a good thing, but again, it brings down how much excitement there will be at any given time. And this place has chosen a way of life that is very different from our own. They don't have any plumbing, they have no traditional roads, and everything in terms of food is taken from the land by farmers and brought to the people. They do have electricity, however. All of that comes from solar panels, but they do not have internet. So you're going to have to get very good at 
started talking to people. What a scary thought. Coming in at number six, we have the Eiffel Tower apartment. If you go to Paris, you can now see what would be the most expensive apartment in the whole city. And that is the Eiffel Tower apartment. The man who built the Eiffel Tower didn't only do it so he could have his masterpiece be the center of attention. No, he wanted to have the best apartment maybe in the world. At the top of the Eiffel Tower is an apartment that only could be accessed by one man who built the Eiffel Tower himself. Gustav Eiffel. Now, people can go visit, but that isn't even the most secret part of this secret room. There's also something that is underneath one of the legs of the Eiffel Tower, and that is a military bunker that can prep troops in the heart of the city without the enemy catching on. Could you imagine a bunch of French troops popping out of the base of the Eiffel Tower? You have to admit, the French have a way with theatrics. Coming in at number five, we have Club 33. Here's something that the super rich and the government want to keep hidden from you, and even with me telling you about it, there's a good chance that you still won't be able to afford the entrance fee. See, Club 33 is something that is hidden away in Disney World. We all know that Disney World is a place where kids come to have their dreams come true, but the kids aren't roaming around free. They're running around with their parents, who, after a long day in the sun taking care of Rugrats, probably want a drink. Turns out, you can't get booze when you're at Disney World, but you can if you're part of Club 33. This is a members-only club that is somewhat a high roller's lounge. Only the best of the best can join. You need a recommendation to get in, and on top of that, if you can get accepted, you have to pay a $25,000 membership fee, and then $12,000 annually each year after after that. It's very much a status symbol. Some suspect that Club 33 has something to do with Jesus or the devil, since we all know that number 33 has strong religious connotations. I don't know if that's true, but if you're blowing your money at Disney World in that amount, you're probably in the Illuminati. Coming in at number four, we have the secret train station under Waldorf Astoria. In movies, high-ranking government officials always have some sort of secret underground transportation that they can use to get around, and some of you think that that couldn't be a real thing in real life. There's no way that something like that could exist. Well, think again. Under one of the most famous hotels in New York, a hotel known as the Waldorf Astoria, there is a train station that is only used by the president himself. This is partly because almost every president has stayed there ever since its inception, but it's also one of the most secure ways for the president to travel. No one can get down there, and even if they did, there is a ton of secret features that the rail car has. For all we know, this thing could be built like a Bond car and have heat-seeking missiles that come through the headlights. Coming at number three, we have Room 39. This is one of the most secret places in North Korea, which is already a very secretive place. No one really knows what goes on in Room 39, but people suspect that government workers work in there to try and create revenue for North Korea through illegal activity. Thought that they could be cooking and organizing the distribution of crystal meth, and they are also finding ways to commit billions of dollars in insurance fraud. That is wild. Going at number two, we have the Vatican Bunker. Now, this isn't a place where the Pope can go to hide out if the world starts to end because he was right about Armageddon. I mean, they probably have a room like that, but it won't be as exciting as the one I'm about to tell you about. The Vatican Bunker is a place where they keep all the files that have been held in the Vatican for centuries. We're talking about 1,200 years of paperwork. I mean, I think you could fit most of that stuff onto a hard drive, so I don't know why they're still doing the whole pen and paper thing, but to each their own. But the Vatican archives have all of the juicy details about everything the church has done for a long, long time. You better believe that all of this information is closed to the public. In fact, if you ever get access to this secret bunker, you have to be a high-ranking scholar, and you can only look through certain folders. The Pope will vet everything that an outsider has access to before they are allowed into the bunker. And there is a hard cutoff. Anything that is younger than 75 years old, there is zero access to. That is a hard and fast rule that only the Pope can break. And even with probably the most accepting Pope of all time, he isn't about to let any of this information slip. But there is a lot of people who want to get their hands on those files with all the problems the church has been getting into in recent years. I can't go into details on this channel because it's disturbing, but either you know what I'm talking about or you're going to go look it up right now. And coming in at 
the number one spot is Area 51. Come on, this has to be number one. What is going on in Area 51? Now, is this a room? Well, kinda, it's an indoor facility, so there is a room in there somewhere, I'm sure. But the whole thing has to be the biggest place that the government is hiding from us. And what is going on in there? We have no idea. I think we could all say aliens, that's probably what we're all thinking, but there could be some tech that will change the world. They could have mech suits in there that are like the ones from Pacific Rim. Just let us in already ready and we'll stop messing around with the stock market, I promise. Have the bomb shelter. So you know how the threat of a nuclear attack has always been looming over our heads for a long time? Well it has been even more so in America. For one, they have way more nukes and they have enemies that have way more nukes. So knowing what to do in a nuclear attack is very useful information. Well Redditor Deadpool8988 wrote on Reddit about how the American government used to tell people that they should dig an 8 foot by 4 foot by 10 foot hole in their backyard just in case a bomb comes through. That way you can jump into the hole and hide and you'll be protected from the nuclear attack. Well it turns out that the reason that the government was so keen on people digging these grave like holes was because they were actually graves. If everyone jumps into a hole right before the bomb hit then there would be less bodies to clean up in the aftermath. The government knew that the hole in the ground wouldn't protect the people but it would get them situated for their inevitable demise much faster. Faster. Moving on to number nine, we have Diego Garcia. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up because it really helps us out. Diego Garcia is a US occupied small island in the Indian Ocean. Technically, it's an overseas territory of Great Britain. In 1966, the people on the island were employed as contract farmers. They were working on coconut plantations. But from 1968 to 1973, the farm workers were kicked off the island by the UK government so that the US slash UK military could have a joint base on the island. So in 1966, the United States was given the rights to use the island if they forgot about the 14 million debt that the UK owed them. Now the island is used by government officials and it's highly, highly guarded. In fact, rumor has it that the island is home to a secret prison. Rumor also has it that the Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 that went missing without a trace actually just landed on this island. Not only that, but apparently rumor has it that this base is used by the CIA to torture prisoners. There's some crazy theories out there. I hope one day we'll find out if any of them are true. Then in 2009, the US military evicted several thousand of the island's local residents. Why they did this is still so top secret. Like they don't know why they got evicted. I really wish we knew. Something fishy is going on over there. Coming in at number eight, we have the Dugway Proving Ground. Located in Utah, the Dugway Proving Ground is the main biological and chemical weapons testing site for the US Army. Like who knows how many and what kinds of dark deadly weapons they are building and testing there. The base also contains top secret US military research documents, which is one of the reasons why the government doesn't want you to know about it. Now, in 1968, the unbelievable happened at the base. On March 13th, a high-speed jet sprayed 320 gallons of nerve gas VX around the air in a test. This is so deadly that 10 milligrams can kill people. It'll stop your respiratory muscles from working and then you'll just choke to death. Anyways, it sprayed in an area near a farm. The next day, thousands of sheep were found dead. The government denied that this was their fault, but people aren't buying it. Either way, they paid the rancher who lost a sheep over $300,000 and tried to keep the situation hush hush. So the government definitely doesn't want us to know any of that. So, but I know it and I shared it with you. <laughs> Moving on to number seven, we have Camp Perry. Camp Perry, otherwise called The Farm, is a top secret training facility run by the CIA. The place is used to train CIA officers as well as officers working in the Defense Intelligence Agency. One of the reasons why this place is so secretive is because they don't want the identity of their top secret agents to be leaked. Because then, hello, they wouldn't be secret agents anymore, would they? Now, listen to just how intense this camp is. So former CIA officer Bill Wagner went to a three week interrogation course at the farm in 1970. He revealed that the people learning to be good interrogators practice techniques such as sleep deprivation, mock execution, 
and would deliberately taint food, which exposes that CIA interrogators use these techniques in real life. Of course, the US government has never formally acknowledged the existence of this camp. Although many people know that it's real. Coming in at number six, we have Area 51. Of course, I had to put this one on the list. Hello, everyone wants to know what the heck is going on at that top secret base. Like, are the rumors true? Do they really have animals hiding there? Are they conducting unethical tests on humans? Area 51 is home to a number of conspiracy theories because it's so highly protected and secretive. Seriously, people have gotten killed for trying to even get close to the building. This has led a lot of people to believe that the military is up to something. What do you think goes on in Area 51? Let me know in the comments below. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Sherman Kent School for Intelligence Analysis. This is a training school in Reston, Virginia for CIA analysts. The school has been given the nickname The Vault because of how many locks and alarms and guards it has. So basically, the school opened in May of 2000 and it apparently teaches members many important things, such as foreign languages, regional studies, satellite image analysis, wiretap transcript analysis, and media report analysis. So basically, everything you think a spy would need to know. This place is basically spy school, which is super cool. Now, like all places on this list, this one is also heavily guarded. It is located on the second floor of a five story structure. The glass windows are smoked to prevent people from looking in and spying. The building also contains sensors to prevent eavesdropping from outside. And like I said, it's protected by a number of locks and alarms and surveillance. In our fourth spot, we have Menwith Hill. Menwith Hill is a Royal Air Force base located in the UK. In fact, it is said to be one of the most secretive places in the UK. First off, the place is super odd. Like there's a bunch of white domes all over the place that look like giant golf balls. Like I feel like it's just the government's own mini putt or golfing range or something like that, but it's not. This site is said to be the largest electronic monitoring system on the planet. So basically, it's a place where they spy on us, monitoring our every move. The site first opened to spy on the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Since then, we don't know exactly what they're spying on. But it's a vital part of the NSA surveillance network. In 2012, it was believed that the base was involved in a number of drone attacks. However, this has never been confirmed. On top of that, it was revealed that the NSA used the base to, and I quote, aid a significant number of capture kill operations. That is terrifying, wow. Moving on to number three, we have Kapustin Yar. Kapustin Yar is basically Russian's version of Area 51. It is a top secret base created by the USSR. It was used for developing the Soviet space program. But now, rumor has it that it is home to aliens. Apparently, people saw a large red sphere flying in the sky right above this base. Others claim to have seen three-eyed aliens wearing silver overalls there. I mean, hey, at least he's stylish. In fact, most alien sightings in Russia occur near this top secret base. Coincidence? I think not. It could be that aliens are trying to escape from this base or something like that. There's even rumors of this base being used to conduct alien autopsies. It's pretty creepy. I don't even want to know if I want to find out what goes on in there. In our second spot, we have the Secret Super Command Bunker. Apparently, the Pentagon is planning to build a secret command bunker 3,500 feet under Washington, D.C. What's the purpose of this bunker, you ask? Well, just in case of nuclear war, the bunker will keep people safe from the nukes. Apparently, the pandemic shook the US government and now they, and I quote, put plans in place to ensure critical elements of the US government can keep functioning in the midst of an extreme crisis. So they're basically gonna be like sick, every man for themselves, peace out, and then just disappear into this secret bunker. And in our number one spot, we have Porton Down. Close to Stonehenge, there's a place called Porton Down, which is basically a massive experimental testing center. It's known for working on chemical and biological weapons, as well as dealing with dangerous pathogens. The stuff that goes on in there is dark, and I mean dark. 
Starting in 1945, the government began testing nerve gas on real humans. These testings on humans went until 1989. In the end, more than 3,400 people had nerve gas tested on them. In 1953, a man named Ronald Madison died after being subjected to liquid nerve gas. Not only did they lie and say they were no longer testing the gas on humans, but they denied that the nerve gas was the cause of his death. Recently, however, it was discovered that they are now testing this gas and other dangerous weapons on animals. What else goes on in there is unknown. Like, what if they're still running unethical tests on humans? It's crazy. Yeah. Starting off this countdown, we have the blue leaks. In June of 2020, following the killing of George Floyd and the protests, Anonymous leaked hundreds of gigabytes of law enforcement files. It has been named the Blue Leaks. Over 269 gigabytes of data were taken from over 200 law enforcement agencies. This included emails, audio recordings, videos, and documents. In total, there were millions of files leaked. Some of the leaked documents show that the FBI was monitoring the social media accounts of protesters, and they were also alerting local law enforcement about anti-police messages. Other documents showed that the FBI was tracking Bitcoin donations to protest groups, as well as highlighted some scandals and police misconduct. In our ninth spot, we have the UK Special Demonstration Squad. This is the name of a group of undercover police officers in the UK. Now the things that they did are going to shock you. For example, they would steal birth certificates and identities of people that had died at a young age. They'd make sure that they would be around their age and then use their identities. The younger the person died, the better, because that means they didn't already live a life that they would have to cover up. And then they would go around with this new identity. Some cases they actually got into relationships with women, but the whole time they did so just to spy on them. In November of 2015, the Metropolitan Police Force apologized to seven women tricked into relationships by these officers. Like imagine that, dating someone you're madly in love with, sometimes even having a kid with them, only for them to be like, oh, sorry, gotta go, was only dating you to get intel on you and your friend circle. It's disgusting and it's actually happened to multiple women. In our eighth spot, we have the radioactive waste. Apparently there's a huge radioactive dumping zone located in Tonawanda, New York. In fact, they dumped more than 37 million gallons of radioactive waste from their World War II atomic bomb tests. This area has a high rate of cancer and thyroid conditions, and this is the reason why, and no one's talking about it. In our seventh spot, we have the hepatitis tests. In 1956, the US government began running tests on young individuals living at the Willowbrook State School in Staten Island. This was a state-supported institution for children with intellectual disabilities. And what they did to these students was give them hepatitis in order to track the development of the viral infection. Of course, they were being experimented on without knowledge or consent. To make matters worse, the study lasted 14 years. They also injected them with a number of drugs to see what they would do to their body and the hepatitis. Imagine intentionally making a group of people sick for an experiment. The grossest part is that when the government was exposed for this project, they tried to justify their actions by saying that these people were probably gonna wind up contracting it anyways. In our sixth spot today, we have Operation Popeye. This is another very wild one. Operation Popeye was a highly classified weather modification program during the Vietnam War from 1967 to 1972. You heard me correctly. The government learned how to control the weather. Basically, they wanted to increase rainfall in certain areas to prevent enemies and military supply trucks from being able to travel. In fact, they caused a number of landslides and flooding in that area. Weather manipulation has since been banned from use for military gain. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with HIV. In the 1980s, the HIV epidemic broke out. 
No one knew how it spread, they just knew that it should be feared, and tons of LGBTQ plus community members were sadly contracting the virus. Well, rumor has it that HIV was a government experiment that was meant to wipe out the undesirables. Of course, the US government has denied this claim, and it's just a conspiracy we don't know for sure. But based on the other experiments done on minority groups, it's hard to know what to believe. In our fourth spot today, we have Project 112 and Project SHAD, or S-H-A-D. Project 112 and Project SHAD took place from 1962 to 1973 and involved a number of veterans or military personnel. Basically, both tests involved exposing these people to substances they might want to use in warfare. Nearly 6,000 people were exposed to Coxiella burnetti, which is Q fever, Staphylococcus enterotoxin B, which causes food poisoning, and sarin and somin gas. Sarin is a very, very dangerous nerve gas, and somin can cause death in minutes. Both can be fatal if only the tiniest amount gets on the skin. These men had no clue that they were being exposed to this. Moving on to number three, we have Project Sunshine. This is another very messed up government project. During the 1950s, the US government was using stillborns to conduct radiation tests on. They wanted to determine the effects that radiation would have on humans, and how much we could withstand in case of a nuclear fallout. They called this Project Sunshine, and it was anything but rainbows and sunshine. What's sad is that the government was stealing body parts and tissues from morgues, without families' consent. It said that more than 1,500 samples were gathered worldwide. This is incredibly sad and sick. Coming in at number two, we have the syphilis experiments. In 1932, the US Public Health Service created an experiment to see the health effects of untreated syphilis. But the test subjects were told that they were receiving free treatment to cure their syphilis. And that was a lie. Instead of giving the men the recommended penicillin treatment, they gave them placebos, like aspirin. Sadly, 28 men died of syphilis because of these experiments, 100 more passed away from syphilis-related complications, and 40 spouses contracted this disease. And 19 women who gave birth passed on syphilis to their newborn children. In 1997, Bill Clinton apologized to the survivors and their families on behalf of the government. And he admitted that the tests were, and I quote, profoundly and morally wrong. And in our number one spot today, we have the radiation tests. In 1953, a number of tests were done on pregnant women to see the effects that radioactive iodine would have on them and their newborns. These studies were terrible. In one study, researchers gave these women doses of iodine-131. Sadly, they all miscarried. When they did, they continued to study the women's aborted embryos. Another study took place after World War II. 829 pregnant mothers in Tennessee were given vitamin drinks. They were informed that these drinks would improve their health and their babies but it actually contained radioactive iron, and the researchers wanted to see how fast the radioisotopes crossed into the placenta. Several of the young passed away from these experiments. Four died from cancers as a result of the experiments, and the women experienced rashes, bruises, anemia, hair and tooth loss, and cancer as well. Meanwhile, they just wanted the best for their babies and thought that this drink was going to help them not kill them. Kicking off the list at number 10, nuclear site list. Here on Most Amazing, we love lists. I'm not sure if you can tell, but apparently the US government also fancies a list or two. Back when Obama was still running the show, a report was delivered to Congress. Well, it was supposed to be. The 266 page report featured every nook and cranny about the US nuclear program, and it was released publicly on the government printing office's website in draft form by accident. Yeah, just a casual PDF that shows us literal maps to stockpiled fuel used for nuclear warheads back in the day. We love those. The only PDFs I actually enjoy are those ones, actually. Does this stuff happen often? How does this happen? I thought this type of stuff could never happen, right? Well, MIT professor John M. Dutch said these screw-ups do happen, and it doesn't look like a serious breach. I mean, it certainly sounds serious, but okay, we'll trust the government. Thank you, sir. Let's do it. In our ninth spot, we have Operation Big Itch. 
Operation Big Itch was the name given to a number of tests conducted at Dugway Proving Grounds in 1954. The experiments involved testing biological warfare on unexpected fleas. At least this time they used fleas and not real people. So the fleas were loaded into two types of munitions and then dropped from the air. After a bunch of trial and error, the operation was a success. Not only could the fleas survive the drop, but they also could still attach themselves onto the hosts, which were guinea pigs. These tests were done to see if it was possible to use infected fleas and drop them into an area to make people sick. That's not all though. In a project known as Operation Big Buzz, they decided to use mosquitoes. In May of 1955, over 300,000 uninfected mosquitoes were dropped over parts of the US state of Georgia. If it worked, they were going to infect these mosquitoes with yellow fever. These two are just some of the entomological warfare tests done in history. In our eighth spot, we have the Edgewood Arsenal drug experiments. Beginning in the 1950s, the army decided to run some tests on psychoactive drugs and other chemical agents on soldiers. About 7,000 soldiers took place in these experiments and they were exposed to 250 different chemicals. Some of the chemicals that were tested on them were sarin gas, LSD, PCP, cannabinoids, irritants, and riot control agents. The effects these chemicals and drugs had on the soldiers were studied and noted. In 1975, the tests were canceled after being deemed controversial. In the end, most of the test subjects suffered from psychological trauma and serious health problems. In our seventh spot, we have the plutonium experiments. Over the years, the US government has participated in a number of plutonium experiments. One of them involved a man named Albert Stevens. This man was misdiagnosed with stomach cancer and then was told he was going to receive treatment for this cancer. Meanwhile, he was just a test subject. He was injected with plutonium without even knowing. And then they said he was cured. He was led to believe that the treatment had cured him. In fact, he received the highest known accumulated radiation dose ever recorded. It should have been lethal. In the end, the plutonium remained present in his body for the remainder of his life, slowly decaying over the years. He ended up dying 20 years later from heart disease. And his ashes were actually stolen so that they could continue analyzing the radioactivity of this man. But they did this without the consent of his relatives. In our sixth spot, we have the burn victims. In the 1950s, researchers at the Medical College of Virginia performed a number of unethical experiments on burn victims. In particular, they targeted poor black victims. These victims did not give their consent for these tests. They were then subjected to additional burning, experimental antibiotics, and injections of radioactive isotopes. Over a 10 year period, more than 770 patients were experimented on. 460 of them were African American. A number of people develop fluid loss and anemia from the severe burns that they were subjected to. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the chemicals. From 1950 to 1953, the US Army conducted a number of experiments over six cities in the US and Canada. The tests were to see the dispersal patterns of chemical weapons. So they sprayed chemicals all over these cities. Some of the chemicals being zinc cadmium sulfide, which was thought to not be harmful. One place affected by these sprays was Minnipeg, Manitoba in Canada. They were informed that they were testing a chemical fog to protect Winnipeg in the event of a Russian attack. So they said that this fog was going to be a defense study, which was a lie. Although it was said to be a small dose that they were exposed to, in some urban environments, people were exposed to higher levels. And because of how small the size of the particles were, it made it more dangerous according to a scientist, due to the fact that they could get lodged deeper into people's respiratory systems. Thankfully, no one died from the tests, but it's so sketchy how they lied about it all. Like, yeah, we're doing these tests to protect you. Just kidding. In our fourth spot, we have the Holmesburg program. From 1951 to 1974, a number of dermatological experiments took place in Holmesburg prison in Pennsylvania. The studies were performed by Dr. Albert M. Kligman on behalf of the US Army, Dow Chemical Company, and Johnson & Johnson. The test started with looking at health effects of dioxin and other herbicides on the human body. So they exposed some patients to these chemicals. And years later, a number of them developed a variety of health problems like lupus. So they actually sued the professor. 
but that didn't stop him from continuing on with these experiments. In fact, he increased the amount of dioxin that the people were exposed to. He applied 7,500 milligrams of dioxin. That's 468 times the dosage of the first test, which still made people ill. The prisoners developed a number of terrible inflammatory pustules and papules. That's not all though. In 1967, the US Army paid Kligman to apply skin blistering chemicals to the faces and backs of inmates so they could learn how the skin protects itself from toxic chemicals in case of attack. One creepy report from Kligman said, and I quote, all I saw before me were acres of skin. It was like a farmer seeing a fertile field for the first time. That's disgusting. In our third spot, we have the FP45 Liberator, which was anything but liberating. This was a failed weapon that was going to be used by the US military during World War I. Since it was small, it could be made cheaper and more of them could be produced. The plan was to have these weapons airdropped to the soldiers. They then were going to use these weapons to kill enemy troops before stealing their weapons. Plus, they thought that enemies would be intimidated when they see all these weapons being airdropped to them. They wanted to strike fear into them. The US produced one million of these weapons, but it was all for nothing. The whole thing was found impractical and ineffective and a waste of time and money. In our second spot, we have the Dorset experiments. Between 1953 to 1975, a series of experiments were done to see how far one ship or aircraft could spread a biological warfare agent over the UK. These experiments were referred to as the Dorset Biological Warfare Experiments. Between 1961 to 1968, more than a million people along the south coast of England were exposed to E. coli and Bacillus globigii. It was spread by a military ship anchored off of the Dorset coast, spraying the organisms towards them. That was just one experiment out of many. Another one included releasing a bacteria in the London underground at lunchtime to see how far it would spread. In fact, people close to where the trials took place became very sick. Women miscarried, other kids were born with cerebral palsy or had birth defects. They blame these experiments. And in our number one spot today, we have the irradiation experiments. Between 1960 to 1971, the Department of Defense funded a number of radiation experiments. These experiments, again, were conducted without the person's consent and was mainly performed on poor and black patients with cancer. The patients were told that they were receiving a treatment that might cure their cancer, which was a lie. Instead, researchers were seeing the effects that high levels of radiation would have on the human body. Imagine thinking that these doctors were here to help you, but in the end, you were just one big test subject for them. And they weren't helping you. In the end, it made patients worse. Kicking off the list at number 10, nuclear secrets. Today's technology, it's getting faster. It's getting better, it's getting harder, it's getting stronger, right? All the good stuff. I'm learning more from Wordle than I did in high school, okay? But how secure are these study apps? That's the million dollar question. A year ago, we quickly saw how a flashcard app could expose nuclear secrets. Yeah, this is a, this is a big one. Nuclear bases around Europe are housing US troops, and while they're there studying, they're using online flashcard apps to remember complex security codes. Makes a lot of sense. They would use common sites such as Quizlet, Cram, Check prep, etc. There was one set of 70 cards, again holding top secret information, titled Study with an exclamation mark. Study! There we go. Each card contained information regarding live and non live nuclear weapons. Guys like 6 times 6, 36. Okay, 8 times 8, 64. And uh, that's a nuclear warhead. Okay, I don't know what this flashcard is. That's, uh, that's a nuke. Moving on at number 9, we have Nixon's Health. Now, this isn't really classified information, but I thought it was quite interesting and it was brought to my attention by Kelly Kama Roy on Reddit. So, the files of Richard Nixon's longtime physician, Dr. Walter Tkach, probably said that last name wrong, are on lockdown. The doctor's son has the files and is planning to eventually release them to the Nixon library, but when he does, they will not be open for 75 years. Not only that, but taped conversations between Nixon and his doctor are also on lockdown and they will not be released. Now why is this significant? While some people believe that Nixon was incapacitated towards the end of his presidency, if so, then under the 25th amendment, he should have had his authority suspended. So there's a reason why the government has been keeping these files classified. It's going to apparently expose a lot. 
In our 8th spot we have the trade documents. Back in 2019 the reddit account OsterMaxNN leaked a bunch of UK government trade documents. The documents discussed future trade deals between the US and the UK. They also revealed plans by the conservative party to privatize national health service. After investigation it turns out that the reddit user that leaked the documents was part of a larger coordinated effort from Russia. Reddit said and I quote we investigated this account and the accounts connected to it. And today we believe this was part of a campaign that has been reported as originating from Russia. In our 7th spot we have Area 51. Everyone wants to know what really goes on in Area 51. Is it really where they are keeping aliens? I need to know. But sadly we don't truly know. But we do have some insider information on what it's like in Area 51. Yeah, you heard me. Eight years ago, a Reddit user by the name of Kiver16 revealed that his mother's boyfriend is Steven Gorvan, aka one of the people who was at Area 51 testing the Mars rover. He uploaded a picture of Steven holding a sign saying, Hi, Reddit, ask me anything, as proof that it actually was him and he wasn't just gonna make it up. So people quickly jumped to it, asking him tons of questions on the mysterious base. During one part of the QA, Steven revealed that when he first arrived at the base, he saw a strange aircraft flying low across the desert floor. He believed that it was a test flight for a secret aircraft. He said it moved at subsonic speed and didn't make a lot of noise. He also revealed that Area 51 is much bigger than it looks, with tons of different sectors and buildings. Now, sadly, he didn't see any aliens. But he did reveal that it seemed like we are close to hoverboard technology, like the ones you see in Back to the Future. So that's pretty cool. Moving on to number six, we have DB Cooper. One of the most famous and mysterious cases of all times. And I might have found out what happened to him. But first, let me give a rundown on this dude for the people who have no clue what I'm talking about. Dan Cooper, or DB Cooper, is a man who was responsible for a plane hijacking in 1971. No one knows who he is or where he is now. So in 1971, Cooper boarded the plane, and once in the air, he handed the flight attendant a note saying that he had a bomb in his suitcase. He demanded $200,000 and a parachute, but he didn't want any hostages. So they landed in Seattle, he got his requests, and then he told the pilot to fly to Mexico City. However, along the way, he took the money and his parachute and jumped out of the plane. The police looked for Cooper until 2016, and this case is known as one of the longest active searches in history. Now, two years ago, a former FBI special agent joined Reddit and did a AMA, ask me anything. To prove it was really him, he held a piece of paper like the other dude, saying his name and his Reddit, blah blah blah. The man is Mark Ruskin, who worked 20 years in undercover operations. One of the questions that someone asked him was about D.B. Cooper, and what the FBI thought happened to him, and what he thought happened to him. Ready for this? Both the FBI and Mark believe that D.B. Cooper did not survive the parachute down. I know, I know, so anticlimactic, but apparently they have evidence to suggest he didn't make it. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the cat bomb. So this secret isn't really a secret anymore, I guess most of these aren't secrets anymore, but I didn't know this was a thing until I read about it on Reddit, meaning that I bet some of you haven't heard about it either. So during World War II, the government thought it would be a good idea to strap a cat to a bomb. They thought that by doing so, it would assure the bombs would reach their target. Cats hate water, so they thought if you drop a cat strapped to a bomb over water, the cat would avoid the water and then would just land on the battleship's deck. But obviously, for many reasons, that did not work out. Cats would end up passing out midair before sinking without a trace. They also tried something similar with bats, which again, didn't really work. Moving on to number four, we have the bomb shelter. This is going to come to a shock to anyone who lives outside of the US. Posted on Reddit by the user Deadpool8988, they said that at one point, the US government was telling people to build a bomb shelter in their backyards. They instructed people to dig a big enough hole in their backyard and then cover it with a door. They were told to hide out there in case of a nuclear attack. 
But turns out that the real reason why they were telling families to do this was so that if there was a nuclear attack, the government wouldn't have to bury as many bodies. So families were literally digging their own graves. That is extremely disturbing. In our third spot, we have the blood supply. Okay, this one is going to be pretty crazy. So back in 1984, the Red Cross Society in Canada was importing blood products from the US. This was at the time of the AIDS crisis, and America was hit much harder with it. There was fear that the disease was going to be transmitted through this blood. But the Red Cross ignored it, and according to this Reddit user who was a lab worker for the American Red Cross, apparently they were aware of this and so was the US government. But they didn't warn Canadians. Instead, they told them they had nothing to worry about and that they tested the blood before sending it. The guy was forced to keep his mouth shut and lie. As a result, tons of hemophiliacs who had blood transfusions later died of AIDS. What's freaky? is that the reddit user that shared this information later deleted his account. I just hope that he's safe and that the government didn't come for him for exposing them. In our second spot we have the leaked emails. In March 2016, the personal gmail account of John Podesta, a former White House chief of staff and chair of Hillary Clinton's 2016 US presidential campaign, was hacked and his emails revealed some very disturbing things. So the emails were posted to Reddit along with other websites and then users started to decipher them. They believe that Hillary and other people of power are part of a human king and a sex ring. In the emails they use code words like pizza, cheese pizza, and hot dogs. Kinda weird. And it would say things like, and I quote, I'm dreaming about your hot dog stand in Hawaii. Clearly, there's a hidden message to that. I can't dive into too much detail about it for obvious reasons, but you should do some research of your own. It's crazy. What makes this more suspicious is that the government removed all posts about this from Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, and other social media sites. Any posts about the emails and the theories will be removed. And in our number one spot, we have the blue van. Okay, this one thoroughly creeps me out. Like, it just proves that the government is up to no good. So, this story was posted on Reddit by a former homicide detective. One time, he was called to a scene where the victim had called 911, saying that someone was trying to kill him. He told police that he was hiding in his panic room. When they arrived at his house, there were no signs of forced entry, and all the doors remained locked from the inside. Inside the house, there was no damage, it was just super clean, no signs of violence or anything. Due to this, the detective believed that the attacker was someone that the man knew and invited inside. When they eventually got to the panic room, they found the man sitting on the floor. His face had a terrified expression plastered on it. Both of his arms were missing, not cut off. They looked as if they had been ripped off. His missing limbs were never found. Now, here's where it gets spooky. As soon as they reported their findings, the police captain told the team to give all of the evidence, along with the victim's body, to the individuals in a blue van that had arrived on the scene. The blue van belonged to the government. After they did this, the case was buried. They never heard any more information on it. Like what? Seems like some government creature got released and killed this guy or something like that and then they're trying to cover it up. Number 10. Spy Tools Back in August 2016, a group named the Shadow Brokers were the talk of the town. How could you not be with a name like that? That name makes them sound like a comic book villain. The Shadow Brokers? What? But check this out. The Shadow Brokers would basically steal cyber weapons from an NSA hacking unit and then proceed to sell them online to the highest bidder. The Shadow Brokers. I can't lie, it's a pretty sick name. The intentions, however, not so rad, not so radical. These tools have been used by many countries and many schemes. China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, you name it. These cyber attacks are also no joke. Once the entire city of Baltimore was under quite the cyber attack, I swear to God, the entire city, the 2019 ransomware cyber attack all connected to said shadow brokers. Yeah, whoever this mysterious group is still remains a mystery. Is it you? 
If so, click thumbs up on this video. In our number nine spot today, we have mobilization. The Russo Japanese War is one that lasted for a little over a year, spanning from 1904 to 1905. While the war was mainly between Russia and Japan, the signal interception I want to talk about today came from a British ship. As the Russian fleet was preparing for conflict with Japan in 1904, a British ship called the HMS Diana was stationed in the Suez Canal. This canal is located in Egypt and it connects the Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea. While stationed here, the HMS Diana ended up intercepting Russian naval wireless signals that were being sent out. These signals were apparently intended to signal for the mobilization of the fleet. In our number 8 spot today, we have the BBC. So for this one, we have to be on the same page for what a numbers station is. Basically, they are shortwave radio stations and the transmissions or broadcasts are usually certain numbers or other repetitive things which are believed to be aimed to address intelligence officers who are operating in foreign countries. So for this one, we are taking it back to 1983 when the BBC, yes, the British Broadcasting Corporation, received a letter from a listener they had in Andorra. This listener had written into the World Service Waveguide program to complain that during her attempt at listening, she was interrupted by a female voice that was reading out numbers in English, and she wanted to know what this interference was. While the corporation gave a regular, non-sinister answer to the confused woman, after more research was done into the case, people aren't quite convinced. Many people who know much more about these things and recognize the patterns seen in number stations are fairly certain that this interruption was a numbers station that was being broadcast on a random frequency that just happened to intercept with this woman's BBC program. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Duga radar. So for this one, we are talking about a huge missile defense radio structure called Duga 3. This structure is suspected of having been wildly over budget and it was the source of many, many complaints after it was built. The systems were extremely powerful and broadcast in short wave radio bands. They would appear without warning and sounded like a sharp, repetitive tapping noise and they would disrupt things like legitimate broadcasts, amateur radio, commercial aviation communications, and utility transmissions which all led to their being international complaints and at the time, people didn't know what it was. This led people to think that this signal was actually being used for things such as Soviet mind control or weather control experiments. In our number 6 spot today, we have World War 1. For this one, we are taking it back to the first world war and discussing something that really changed the way we use wireless communications. Basically, during the first world war, British forces were able to intercept German radio communications. With this newfound ability, they were able to learn about the plans that German forces had and used this to their advantage. Of course, later when this was found out, no one wanted a similar thing to happen to them, but the technology was so valuable they couldn't just give up on it. This is said to be what led to the use of cryptography, which was intended to conceal the messages being sent out, and thus cryptoanalysis, which originated to get around this new extra layer of protection, was born. In our number 5 spot today, we have Cobra Mist. This is the code name that was used to describe the experimental over the horizon radar that ended up being stationed at Orford Ness, England. It was originally supposed to be stationed in Turkey, where it could cover most of the European Soviet airspace, but Turkey had some objections and weren't all that pleased with the idea. This led to the site being moved to the UK where it offers a view of most of Eastern Europe. The system was built through the 1960s and into the 1970s, so you think it would have been this amazing success, but things went more than a little awry when it was first turned on. When switched on, it began having these noise problems, and despite best efforts, no one could figure out where these problems were coming from, which led to the project being shut down in 1973. In our number 4 spot today, we have UVB. 76. This sound apparently began to happen in the 1980s when a radio tower just north of Moscow began transmitting a random and seemingly bizarre assortment of beeps, but in 1992 the sound began to change. In that year it suddenly switched to a buzzing sort of sound that would last about a second, and the sound would occur somewhere between 21 to 34 times every minute. This strange routine would be interrupted once every few weeks by a male voice which would then be reciting a string of numbers and words mostly Russian sounding names like Anna and Nikolai. The buzzing wasn't necessarily always exactly the same as the tone would switch and there would be different intervals between the buzzes, but one thing that was always consistent is that every hour on the hour, the station would have two quick consecutive buzzes. To make things stranger, in June of 2010 and also in August of that year, the station briefly stopped sending out signals despite it having been constantly for years and years. At the
the end of August in 2010, the station again changed and there began to be different shuffling sounds and thuds that could be heard in the background, and often little snippets of the dance of the little swans from Swan Lake would also interrupt the broadcast. Well, we obviously know that these sounds are coming from a radio broadcast and we can make out what some of the sounds we're hearing are, we have absolutely no idea what purpose they serve, where they are coming from, or what they might mean. Right now, the best guess is that these are secret messages that are being transmitted to secret agents. If that is the case, it's likely we might never know exactly what is being discussed in these broadcasts. In our number three spot today, we have the Lincolnshire Poacher. The Lincolnshire Poacher, which is a British numbers station, was being transmitted from Cyprus. It began transmitting in the middle of the 1960s and was in operation until quite recently in 2008. The station is believed to have been operated by the British Secret Intelligence Service, and the reason behind its name is because it is said that the station commonly used bars from the English folk song of the same name. There would often be a female voice heard reciting a group of five numbers, with the final number in the group being read in a higher pitched voice. It is believed that the station was meant to be communicating with undercover agents operating in the Middle East. Back in 2006, however, this broadcasting was interrupted by the North Korean Foreign Language language service, Voice of Korea. This language service began to broadcast on the same frequency as the Lincolnshire Poacher, which some believe may have been intentional. In our number two spot today, we have Anna Montez. For this one, we are taking a bit of a turn and talking about someone who used secret signals and transmissions in order to spy on the US for Cuba. Anna Montez is a former American senior analyst at the Defense Intelligence Agency, and for 17 years, she used encrypted messages to receive information and communicate with the Cuban government in order to spy on the United States. In the charging documents, American federal prosecutors said, quote, Montez communicated with the Cuban intelligence service through encrypted messages and received her instructions through shortwave encrypted transmissions from Cuba. In addition, Montez communicated by coded numeric pager messages with the Cuban intelligence service by public telephones located in the District of Columbia and Maryland. The codes included, I received message, or danger. Anna was arrested by the FBI at her office on September 21st, 2001, and part of the reason why is because she apparently had classified information on the US military's pending invasion of Afghanistan, and people were worried that she might go on to further reveal this information. While Anna pleaded guilty to her crimes, which could have carried a death sentence, she received 25 years and her tentative release date is January 8th, 2023. In our number one spot today, we have Atencion. This is a number station that ended up being the first to be officially and publicly accused of transmitting messages to spies. This station was the center of an espionage trial, and US prosecutors claimed that the station was sending numbered codes for the accused to write down using Sony handheld shortwave receivers and then decode using a computer program. This gave them their next instructions that were to be followed in their spying plans. During this trial, the FBI testified that they had entered one of the spy's apartments and copied the decryption code that was used for the messages sent from the station. Using this code, they were able to unveil the secret messages being sent out, which they read in court. Mm -hmm.